Hello, 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 everyone. What is going on? I am here with the William. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and uh, today we are reviewing the one, the only. We're pretty much uh, reviewing the uh, Vince Gilligan universe, the Breaking Bad universe. So, um, yeah, we're reviewing all the stuff Vince Gilligan's done for Breaking Bad. Um, well, for the what? What is it actually called? That universe? I don't know. The, the Gilligan's. The Cinematic the Gilligan <laughs> the uh, uh, the uh, G, uh, the GCU. So yeah, <laughs> starting off with Breaking Bad. Now the first question I've got to ask you about Breaking Bad: How long was you? Oh yeah, spoilers. By the way, it's like there's, it's like probably it's the second best show of all time, apart from Fools and Horses. This is the number one show of all time. So just go and watch it. Spoiler alert. Now, how long was you on his side for? When did you? Uh, uh, when did you think, man, this dude's just a pos? Um, I don't know. It's hard to really say because um, when you're when you're kind of like invested in like the story and everything, you kind of almost end up um, because you see that gradual like I guess escalation, you know, mm -hmm. of, uh, Walter's esca escalation. Where I mean, you know, starting off, he's just this like normal guy, isn't he? Um, yeah. kind of an assuming kind of guy, and then um, you, I feel like you you get a good idea of like why he. Uh, even if you don't, you know, obviously you don't, you don't like, you know, he's not a good person, but like, especially at mm -hmm. the end of it, but like you, you, you understand why he got to like where he did. Um, so I think in a way you kind of almost, when you're invested in that story, you end up kind of almost thinking, you kind of end up like, yeah, you sort of like, you end up sort of thinking as him in a way. And it gets to a point where yeah. only after like, it's all sort of finished, you really kind of like fully grasp it in a way i don't know it's, it's hard to kind of hard to say i mean I've, I've, i even even though that you know at the end of it he's not like um you know at all like a he's completely lost his humanity pretty much by the end of it you kind yeah. of, I feel like you kind of he does do some good things because... though he does he does do some good things at the end by saving jesse killing those um crazy bikers Jack and his whole squad um, saving Jesse, giving the money to his family, uh, killing Lydia, who's just a total POS. Uh, you know, that's the name, isn't it? The crazy coffee lady who's just like, Whoa, all the time. Sorry, my wire just came off my uh, headphones then. Um, oh, I think I think so. I can't remember, actually. But yeah, no, I mean, um, yeah, like that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Like at the end, he kind of like, uh, he does kind of like the best thing he could do, consider you know all things considered, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like he, like by by the end of it, like like every sort of sort of like bad person is pretty much just dead, you know. <laughs> yeah. Apart, well, out of all the bad people in Breaking Bad, Saul's the only one left standing. Everyone else is pretty much just flattened, aren't they? Yeah, but I mean, as you can sort of see by by in the kind of like you know the black and white segments of. Uh, Better Call Saul, which is kind of like the present day. Um, yeah. His life is pretty crap, but you know, sort of like. <laughs> well, I won't be too bad if I had. God, if 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 you'd wrong like about fifty million people and got horrible people off of like getting the death sentence for murdering innocent people or getting a life in prison for doing horrific things or murdering people or whatever they've done. And then you just end up getting away with everything and just being a manager at some like coffee shop or whatever it is or cafe. You've, you've done pretty well, in my opinion. You've done like, like quite well for yourself. You, you should have got killed or beaten up for what you've done. You shouldn't be uh, getting off, but sadly he got off. And uh, Well, who knows? He could get killed at the end of Series 6. Who knows? Um, yeah. But I was going to say, right, for me, watching it the whole way through, because I was, uh, well, I, I guess I still think highly of myself now, but I was a lot more of an egomaniac when I watched it. Uh, a lot more. And the thing is, right, I was on his side all the way through because I thought, people have been mean to this dude. Hank's taking the piss out of him at his party. Fuck everyone. Come on, Walt. And I was just rooting for him the whole way through. Even even when he said, I did it for me. I I felt alive. I was like, yes, Walt. Yay. And then he saved Jesse. And I was like, hey. And whenever anyone was mean to Walt, I was like, you're a cunt. You know, I, I was annoyed at everyone. I just, I just backed up Walt all the way because he'd been dealt a shit hand, been mocked his whole life, and then he just said "fuck you" to everyone and just went ballistic. But obviously, watching it back and paying attention to it, I was on his side up until he let Jane die. Because um, the me now, the twenty-one-year-old me, the 
a different guy. I um I, I feel like he should have helped Jane. I feel like that's the point where you, he was a bit of a twat and had outbursts before, but it was sort of both Jesse and Walt's fault. Like they got in fights over pretty much fuck all. It was both of them just being stupid. But once he let Jane die, I thought to myself like, mate, you can try and justify all you want and say you would have been dead within a week or whatever if you had all that money, but you don't know that. And at the end of the day, that's their free choice to die, isn't it? That's their, if they want yeah. to bloody go, go mad or whatever and do drugs still, like they can die. If they, at least you did at least you didn't contribute to that, but instead he let her die, and then I, I just thought to myself, you know what, fuck you. Then we'll, you know. Yeah, I feel like in a way, um, the the main character that you sympathize you sympathize with the whole time is probably Jesse. I think um, because um, yeah, but sorry, go on, go on. Go because on. I feel like um, you know by the end of it, I feel like he pretty much presents everything that he's gone through, and I feel like. I think actually, if there's one point that really feels where you, you really kind of feel um, that, you know, sort of the unforgivable things that sort of uh, Walter did is probably like poisoning the kid, even though he doesn't yeah. die, you know, he gets really ill. That yeah. obviously is a really kind of a terrible thing. And also as well, exactly. I feel like I, you could tell, I think in the, in the beginning of, of season five, when after, obviously it wasn't him that killed that killed that kid but where after but he was fine he didn't seem that bothered yeah, did he like like uh in the following episode you can tell you can see uh that it really disturbs jesse like the fact that he's kind of just sort of he's accepting it he's just kind of like these things happen but you can tell yeah. like there's that kind of split you know he he can't really accept that i feel like he's always i feel like jesse's always kind of quite he never takes it very well when like you know people die <laughs> Uh, which obviously, like yeah, which obviously he he sort of thinks to himself, like, all right, I've got to do this. What's telling me to do this? But the thing is, right, if we're talking as objectively as possible, and I try to look subjectively, I'm rooting for Jesse because deep down he's a good guy, but objectively, why the fuck did you get into this drug dealing business in the first place? And I'm sorry, son. You're not that stupid. What the hell do you expect to happen? Like, I'm not being rude to Jesse, but what does he expect? Like, people are going to die. I'm not saying it makes it right. It's that, and I'm glad that Jesse's the way he is, but he should have really not let people manipulate him. He isn't that stupid. He's a fairly smart bloke, but that's what makes the show interesting. So I am on Jesse's side to a, out of all the sort of people who kill people, I am on Jesse's side that, because he only killed a few people, but he was manipulated into doing it. So out of all the sort of, He's definitely the hero out of all the bad people. He's the he's the least worst by far out of the bad bunch. He's he, he's good at, by the end. He's a really good guy by the end of it, and um, he's just sort of roped into this stuff. Walt's like, I need you to do this, Jesse. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. So you do feel bad for him, but in in a sense, like why even get into the drug business in the first place, you buffoon? But obviously, that's just real. That would be boring if Jesse didn't get into the drug business. That would have made for a shit boring show. So um, subjectively, I'm rooting for him all the way. But objectively, if you try to treat as realistic as possible, what what the hell was Jesse doing? Like <laughs> he can't be this stupid. But you know, maybe just maybe because his parents treated him badly. Because it comes it comes back to that um, nature versus nurture thing that people talk about. Right? How Jesse he probably did drugs, and his parents were like, oh, what the hell were you doing? Blah blah blah. But he was, you know, he probably just did a bit of puff at first, a bit of weed, and then that probably escalated a bit and his parents sort of gave up on him. So I feel like Jesse sort of had to fend for himself. Then when someone like Walter White comes along and starts, you know, working with him, sort of being a proper father, because, you know, he talks about different things like, you know, Jesse, get off drugs. Jesse, you know, don't eat Cheetos, eat something healthy, you know, like a <laughs> proper boomer. Um, it's like he's he's the father that Jesse didn't really have because his parents just seem... His parents are probably... I'm not saying they're fully to blame because Jesse might... People who do this make their own choices, but the parents have to be to blame a bit because why suck up to the younger sibling and just treat Jesse like a failure and like a bag of shit? Why not try and help him? And when he tried to visit him, they're so twatty to him. It's like, come on, he's your bloody son. Like, he, oh, ridiculous. Mm, yeah, I think you know, it is interesting because I feel like pretty much um, Vince Gilligan seems to really like, you know, uh, I mean, it's all about character, really. The, the entire, the entire, like, oh yeah, like, yeah. bad and and local soul. And I feel like um, all the like central characters. I mean, they start off really pretty much being in a position of kind of normal life, pretty much. But then things just constantly get in their way. There's always people that are kind of like 
who treat them like shit, and it kind of it it ends down it, it just falls into this sort of spiral. I think that um, Better Call Saul explores it really well as well with like um, Jimmy, like um, you know his own brother treats him like crap, like he just doesn't care about him, and you know it, you know for the first like couple of seasons there is a, there is that element um, of him wanting to be um, a legitimate um, lawyer, you know, wanting to be a good per- good person, but everything he's constantly being told that he's he's in the shadow of his brother. And yeah, he yeah. Like, way he just sort of thinks, for, forget it. Okay, then I, I I'm not going to be my brother. That you know, I'm just going to mm. be what they what they what they say I am. You know, a crook, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. what, you know, that, I think that's what like leads him to that. I think there's like some really interesting. I feel like they explore it really well in that because it's mm-hmm. because he's Definitely. like the central character, obviously. Well, I feel like with Saul, we'll get onto this later when we get onto Better Call Saul. But I feel like with Saul. It's a lot more just it, with Jesse, as much as I think he's daft for doing what he's done, like objectively, um, you know, he's probably had it really hard and whatever. Saul, he's been told, screw you, you're an idiot, blah, 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 blah. You're an idiot. Oh, you made this mistake. So therefore, you're the worst person ever. Oh, you, blah, 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 blah. everyone's having a go and the system is keeping him down. So he just sort of exploded. But the things that he does are very, you know, slimy and shady and stupid. So that's when you—that's when the bad, evil side comes in. It's not oh, like yeah. he's trying I mean, to be a proper lawyer. He—he he really doesn't care about like, um, like when it comes to like you know schemes and stuff that he comes up with. He—he will just do anything to yeah. get like to get someone free. Um, you know, there's like there's so many different schemes he'll come up with, and mm-hmm. he doesn't—he doesn't really think about like the the ethics of that. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean. With Saul in Breaking Bad, straight away, like they, you know, kidnap him, and he's like, "Oh, who sent you? What's going on? Uh, is it about Lalo? Oh no, you know." But then he's like, "But pretty much Saul, he's hyped up. You want this guy's services? He's a criminal lawyer, you know." <laughs> um, and yeah, he does a lot of plotting and scheming. I like how when Mike's interrogating him, saying, "I'm gonna." Don't make me beat you till your legs don't work. Give me where Jesse's de- give me Jesse's details. Tell me where he is. And he just comes up with some fake bullshit. I'm like, man, he's a proper lawyer because at least he didn't break client confidentiality, but he pretty much broke every other rule in the book. Um, but I only watched so many episodes. I think I've only watched like in the lead up for this, I watched like 18 episodes of Breaking Bad and 18 episodes of no 19 episodes of Better Call Saul. And um, I saw some of Saul's schemes, like um but the main one I remember that stuck out to me, I know he's probably done other ones, which I just can't think of right now. But um, the one that was quite banterous to me was when he uh, when he said, oh, well, um, you, you can have, uh, when Jesse's mom and dad are trying to sell the house, and he's like, well, you can have this for, uh, I've got, my client's got $400,000 cash for you. And he's like, well, we were asking for 800000 And then he's like, well, there's a uh, cocaine in the basement or something or something. There was something in the basement which shouldn't be there. And they're like, woo and then they just cave in. So while it isn't illegal for Saul to do it, it's a very shady, shitty tactic. But it's quite fun. Uh, but I was happy about it because it got Jesse the house and he said, fuck you to his parents. So that was quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, What's that? Yeah, were you going to say? Oh, no, no, no. I was, I was uh, no, you go ahead, man. Oh, I, I lost my trailer. So I couldn't, I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, <laughs> Can you think of any other schemes he's done? Because I just can't think of any off the top of my head. Any other interesting, like, next level, like, whoa, schemes? Like, well, in Breaking Bad. Oh, I'm trying to think. Breaking Bad. Because it's, it's been a while since I actually watched them all. Um, oh, okay, fair. It's funny, because with, with, like, Saul Goodman, I never really thought of him too much as kind of, like, a... Um, I, I, I didn't think that he would be he'd be a natural kind of, like, lead of a, of a series. I, I really mm-hmm. was expecting it to Especially medical souls really work, but it it really mm-hmm. does. But also get we'll get to that um, more. But I feel like um, I mean I kind of just like him as a character. Like you know, there's like there's some really good moments. I, th- I think yeah, one of my favorite scenes is um, when he's talking to Jesse and he's explaining. I think embezzlement. Our money laundering. Money laundering. Yeah, like he, he's explaining the whole thing, and it's quite that scene. I quite like. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not like a scheme or anything, it's you know explaining you know, how these things yeah. work. Um, 
Uh, it is cool how he sticks by his clients and gets them out of the crap. But I can remember more of his schemes in Better Call Saul, yes. But um, I think we might as well move on to Mike uh, in Breaking Bad. Pretty much, he's just a machine, isn't he? He's just a cold-hearted killer. And the thing is, the first time I watched it, I sort of rooted for him a bit. But when he was like, you know what has to happen now, Walter, and he was killing Walter in series, he was going to kill Walter in series three. I was like, oh, fuck you, Mikey Bellend. Why are you listening to Grudge, you twat, mate? You're all mind up, you bloody robot. But um, obviously, I think a little bit differently now. And he did he did warn Walt. He said, are you going to risk this all for a junkie? You know, and the, the do you remember the half measure scene? Like when he's going on about, I chose oh, a yeah. half measure. That's one of the most amazing scenes in Breaking Bad. That, That's such an that amazing scene, story. I can never forget that because um, in university, I think it was in, uh, yeah, it was in first year of uni. And um that we had to do, we had to recreate um, scenes from Breaking Bad. Oh, um, nice. Lucky bastard. Man. One of them, uh, we we had, uh, it was it was a scene with Gus we had, but um, okay. what the, but one of them was the no half measure scene. Oh, uh, cool. I wish we did that one because that one is such a great, it's such a great monologue. Um, yeah. I think there are some just genuinely really great um, monologues and just sort of like, you know, within the series, I think it was both actually. You know, Definitely. just sort of, you know, character moments were just, you know, really memorable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mike is pretty much a machine. He goes around killing people like it's nothing. Doesn't really care. Um, it's funny how in the end, it's just all his efforts were well. He died in vain, pretty much because he's like, shut the fuck up and let me die in peace. But as better call as Saul said. All the money goes to Uncle Sam. It doesn't help his granddaughter. All this was for nothing. If anything, why didn't Mike, if he truly, I'm not saying he doesn't care about his granddaughter, but he's not a buffoon. If he truly, truly cared, why didn't he just tough it out in the police? I know the police was fucked up and did a load of stupid stuff across his family, which we'll get into with Better Call Saul. But like, why didn't he just try and stay in the police or get a normal job and just... Or what he could have done, do the security job and do the jobs on the side, have the cash in hand at home and just spend the cash in his bank. It will make his credit score look shit, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, he's got the cash in hand at home. But, like, why did he need so much money and why did he do this for so long? I think it was just, like, he was a machine and this is all he wanted to do. I think he's a bit like Walt, but doesn't realise it. Like, he does this because... He does it because it's the thing that he's really good at, but it's not for his ego. It's just for him. While with Walt, it's for his ego. And he does say, you know, I'm doing this for my daughter, doing this for my daughter, but he doesn't think, like, he doesn't think far enough ahead, what if I die, the money's not going to go to her. You know what I mean? Hmm. A bit. I think maybe maybe there's definitely... Things have kind of changed for him, I think, from, I'd say, between Broken Soul Saul and, and Breaking Bad, I think. Because I think throughout I think throughout Broken Soul, Saul, I feel like I always, I'm always rooting for him. Like oh yeah, yeah, definitely, man. He was. That's what. I, that's what I was like. That's what I mean. A bit like the thing is with him in Better Call Saul, you actually see his personality, and he actually shows emotion in some things. On in Breaking Bad, he's sort of a. Just a, I still like him. He's just because I'm shitting on characters doesn't mean that I think they're bad characters. If they're if they're all great people, it'd be boring. Um, well, yeah, no, I, I love Mike in uh, especially in Better Call Saul. Though. Like mm -hmm. he's, he's um like. <laughs> He, he never takes any shit. It's okay. Yeah. I feel like um, the things that happen in Better Call Saul sort of make him more of that hard and boring machine. Not boring as in character boring, but I mean, he can pretty much just shoot someone in the head and not really be bothered. He can kill like 10 people and be like, well, it's part of the job, you know. And when he, he does justify it to himself and he it sounds really glamorous when he's like, oh, um, you know, I've got a cold at the end of the day. I've got a cold. I was hired to do a job, blah, 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 blah. And the code stuff stuck around for a bit. Still does, obviously doesn't make it right to kill people, but it's an interesting perspective from like a, cr a hardened criminal because most I think, criminals... Yeah. I think a lot of it is um, he feels genuinely... You know, the, the death of his son completely changed. Oh, yeah. Because obviously, I mean, you know, there was like the crooked cops, wasn't it? And mm -hmm. you know, they sort of turned on, on his son and killed him. I think that yeah. kind of probably changed his... I think that probably changed like his... Um, kind of how he saw, like I guess, um, ethics and just like that kind of thing probably did completely change him. I think. Yeah, yeah, but um, and, what, like, and the right and wrong, that kind of thing. 
Yeah. I also like his relationship with um, Jesse and Gus. I feel like Mike is just the ultimate worker. Like he just, but the thing is the fact that Gus slits one of his workers throats, who's been loyal to him for years, he just slits his throat because he was, at, he was at the crime scene. And Mike is like, well, you know, it's like, <laughs> what if he does this to you? Like you're probably the best employee ever. You're probably the best hitman employee ever. You do anything anyone tells you for the most part. And uh, you're an absolute beast, but like, come on, bro. Like, what if he's going to slit your throat? Oh, that, but obviously, that that scene is like, what the hell? Like, why does he do that? Like, <laughs> yeah, what if it's like, well, it's, it's loyal. Like, oh, it's kind of, it's crazy. the thing is, because it was because Victor was at the scene of a crime. But the thing is, Victor is so loyal to Gus, he would not have ratted him out any day of the week. They could dangle any any offer in front of him, he would have not ratted Gus out within a millisecond. Um, but yeah. It was so mental because Victor's like, I know how to do it, and he does it perfectly. And then Gus just goes, and, cut, and he's like, What the hell? Oh. It makes Gus a next level villain, pretty much, though. That oh, yeah, we might as well start talking about Gus now. The, all the characters in this are pretty much amazing, apart from Walt Jr. and Marie, which we'll get to later. Um, yeah, Gus is like, Man, he is a stone cold, like. Literally, in series two and three, you think, all right, this businessman, he's like, oh, you know, um, oh, I, I own this place. These people are my employees. Oh, I'll give this money to charity. Oh, shake hands. Oh, smile. But um, he's always smiling with his mouth. You can never see it in his eyes. He's always like, it's like you can't, I don't know how to explain, but like you can't, yeah. there's some, when most people smile, you can see like their eyes move. Well, with Gus, it's sort of like his eyes still stay the same. Like, so imagine the eyes stand the same, but like a smile. Um, he does it really well. The actor does. He does it amazingly. But um, And he does it so many times when he's smiling and trying to be professional. But he pretty much is just some mad businessman, isn't he? Who, mate, it's, it baffles me how smart he is. Because it's like, bro, you, Matt, you own a chicken food joint. Like, you own a really successful business. Why do you need to go around killing people and selling drugs? <laughs> what the hell? It's, but he is a legendary villain. He's so cold, so ruthless. Nothing ever affects him. And in his last moments on Earth, he's not thinking about the bad things he did. His life doesn't flash before his eyes. He just goes, does his tie, and then dies. <laughs> yeah, no, I think he's such a incredible uh, character. Like, because I think, um, yeah, the fact that he's just like, you know, he's like this. I think he's everything that Walt wants to be. Um, yeah, definitely. But um, he could never quite be him, I think. Um, you know, he has this sort of level of professionalism. And, you know, obviously, Walt really admires that. Yeah. Um, and he, he is this sort of, you know, the de legitimate businessman. But his business is illegitimate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but he's, it's, um, yeah, just such a, such a fantastic character. Like, um, just um, so stone cold. And I think there's something so kind of like, the fact that it you keep you know everything he keeps it all in like the fact that he's so unpredictable and you don't really see that kind of like emotion you know um it's just um cool. like yeah he could just you know he can kill victor without really any kind of like there's no sort of like <laughs> just yeah, there was nothing going on in his face he wasn't like crying while he killed him or like sad he just looked he didn't even look angry he just looked like he didn't there was no emotion like crazy like it's like um have you seen the um <laughs> it's a bit of a tangent but have you seen um Boris and gromit um i've seen i've seen bits and pieces of a lot of them uh, have you ever seen the um in the wrong trousers there's the oh the penguin, penguin. how the penguin's emotionless yeah when it's, it's kind of like it. that you know like there's something about like not showing emotion which is genuinely yeah. really scary because you have no idea what you think yeah, because the thing is, I know this is a tangent that I'm going to go on myself, but on this training thing I did at work, um, the this person who was training us from like he, his job is training people with like CVs and whatever. Um, he was like he was showed us this thing with Tim Roth thing called I can't it's something something lies, and basically Tim Roth is this interrogator, and he's like blah 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 blah. We found this, and then the dude smiles a bit. And then he said, all right, we're going to check in this place. Then the dude's like, no, it's not there. And then it, then he says, yep, the, the bomb was there because we saw these movements in his face, these movements in his face. And then he says, it's it's common, you know, you see movements in this face and then it's Dick Cheney going like this. 
and then you you know people looking annoyed and then you've got bill clinton going like this you know like things like that and um so pretty the point with that is like little movements in the face can show all sorts of emotion like you know um shock like whoa like you know happy uh, you know all that jazz any sort of emotion angry you know like just and any, any sort but gus he's like stone cold and as you say you have no idea what he's going to do and that makes him a phenomenal villain because there ain't many villains like that or there's bonkers villains who laugh all the time like the joker or like stoic villains like darth vader but there ain't anyone like gus who just slits people's throats and never reacts to anything and is one person at one time and then the brutal drug crazy businessman at the other time. I think there's that, that one scene, isn't there, in um the flashback when Oh um, he's crying, yeah. He's off yeah, they did you know that when, when he kills when they kill his friend. Mm -hmm. Um and that's quite I think that's quite sort of I guess almost quite shocking because you don't usually see him emotional like that. Yeah. Um and uh, you can you just know that there's so much so much has happened to him in that time, you know, between then and like you know now when he's like he's got to that point where he's now this sort of stone cold, you know, and and, and you know that um, I mean that 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 that's um, that scene when he just murders all of them, you know, he poisons them all. That's just sort of oh yeah, and himself he poisons himself. <laughs> yeah, man, he, really he really needed like, to get him back. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was, he's really brutal when it comes to revenge. Like the fact that he just wanted to, he doesn't want, like what they did to his friend was shoot his friend in the face. He want, but he doesn't want to just shoot them in the face and get them back for what they've done. He wants to make all these people suffer badly. Like Hector, mm -hmm. like he, he revived Hector after, I mean, the thing is like, it's a weird, what, what would you rather be? Would you rather be, if you're an old person or whatever, would you rather be like Hector or dead? And it, like, well, you know, when he's stuck in the wheelchair and all he can do is bang the bell, it's quite a oh, boring, yeah. that, awful that existence. In, uh, again, I, I guess I, I think it's okay to kind of go back and forwards between them. Yeah, yeah, keep going. It doesn't matter. There's so much that happens. But that, there's that scene, um, you know, because he puts him in that hospital and he makes he makes sure that he's well treated because he wants him to be alive. He wants him to. Yeah. Be, <laughs> you know, and, and there's that scene where he's talking about having that trapping that I don't know what what. what animal it is that he traps it's like a bird or something um or, or or rat or something and instead of killing it he's talking about like his childhood instead of killing it he kept it in a cage and he made it suffer and he's telling the story to to hector and you know he can't you know he can't do anything you know he's just yeah he's hector's just stuck there he's just he's just listening to him going on about how you know he wanted that creature to to suffer because that would that's more of a pain than than death and he's telling him this you know this, this story that's yeah. such a like again that's such a powerful like monologue <laughs> yeah because most people you think um if they if someone killed someone close to them and they you know they think all right i'm gonna just shoot them and then they can't hurt anyone else or whatever but gus is like no i want them to suffer i don't care i want them to have the worst life ever and it's like come on bro <laughs> like well and, like, whatever like and like you know, he goes over to him, like he goes to the to the um to the retirement home, you know, and, and just you know, throughout um Breaking Bad, just just to really mess with him. Just to, yeah. just to you know <laughs> when he's like all dead. <laughs> <laughs> but then obviously because that's the only time when Gus shows like his ego or like personal shit, and that's what cost him. If he hadn't done that to Hector, maybe Hector wouldn't have blown himself up to kill him for Walt, hmm. you know. Uh, but yeah, I think we've talked about Gus enough. Um, I guess we can... There's one more character after these three characters I want to bring up. Um, but basically, they're pretty much similar. Skylar, um, Marie, and Walt Jr. Skylar, she's just, you know, Walt's wife. Really angry at first, but then joins him with his drug stuff and money laundering and all that jazz and tries to help him and whatever. Uh, interesting-ish character. I don't get... First time you hate her, but then the second time watching, she's totally in the right to be this angry. Um, yeah, I don't really... Um, I mean, it's, again, it's been a long time since I've watched it. Um, I didn't really feel any hate for her. I mean... Fair enough. How, how would you feel if, like, you know... Uh, <laughs> if you were in her situation, you know? 
think yeah, I'd be livid if I was uh, in a situation. But I mean, the first time I watched it and uh, some other people, it's like you're rooting for Walt no matter what, and it just seems yeah, like no thing. support him. Come on, because, you know. because you're because you're kind of because he's the main character. You're kind of you're go, you know you're you're there I, I like you're going through it all as him in a way, aren't you? All yeah. the time. You see her as being almost like a villain, even though she's totally in the white. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Marie. Yeah, she's really cool. She's really chill. Or a really nice person in the show. A decent character, you know, like she, she has some amazing chemistry with Hank. Uh, she acts well in scenes between her and um, um, Skylar. Uh, she's really cool with Walt Jr. Basically, she interacts with everyone really well, but there's not really anything deep to her character, but it is what it is. It's like she's all right. She's a pretty good character. And then you have Walt Jr. who like most of the most of the episodes he's uh, Walt was making him breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're not wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> no, he serves. To be fair to the lad, he does serve his purpose at times, doesn't he? Like you know, when he's having a go at Walt and saying, "Why are you doing?" Like he needs to be there because to see how like him being lied to, you think, "Oh man, you feel so bad for this kid because he's being lied to so much." And the thing is, Walt saying he's doing this for his family. He needs to have a son who can actually talk and like the baby's fair. Like, don't get me wrong. The baby is an interesting thing to be doing, like an interesting person in the show to be doing things for, but an actual son who's like 16 and, uh, and you know, can it, like talk about stuff and all that. And especially him having cerebral palsy. Uh, sorry, I, I can't pronounce that very well, but um, yeah. especially him having disabilities, you care even more that Walt can get him the money oh, yeah, and the physical and, therapy. And, you know, you can tell, I mean, obviously, his um, Walt's relationship with uh, Skylar is, goes up and down, with, you know, yeah. completely throughout it. But um, you know, throughout the whole thing, he he does genuinely, you know, love um, Walt Junior. You know, you can take yeah. sort of tell throughout the, the series, and um, I think it is quite. I mean, and it's totally understandable why, but it is quite heartbreaking. You know, at the end when you know he refuses to even talk to him. You know, yeah, I don't blame him. Money, but like you can totally understand why, <laughs> but. You know, it is. It's it so. Definitely, it definitely kind gonna... of um, because by that point, I think that's kind of really that. You know that that episode. It's like oh, I can't remember the episode that um, uh, was by. Um... It was the one after us in, wasn't it? The um, a one after us in Mandius, like the, and he's like, yeah, God, "Why don't you just die?" Yeah, like the the um. Or no, what's funny? No, can I just say what's so funny yeah. is that Walt's like. Oh no, he gets some uh, lady at the bar to say, Oh, I'm after uh, Walt Jr., I'm his auntie. And then they think he's talking to his auntie. He's like, Why don't you just die? And Sam's the fact <laughs> the teacher's like, Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> but, but no, um... I think the, um, yeah, that episode when, you know, like they have that massive com confrontation and, you know, he steals the child and stuff. Um, yeah. I think that's kind of gets, that's when Walt really realizes that. Um, everything that he's, you know, sort of done this for, it's completely, it's completely fallen apart, and he doesn't really have anything Definitely. to live for anymore. And Definitely. I think that kind of that, you know, him taking the child, is kind of like this sort of. Um, That's the last thing that means. Him letting, it, it's him kind of like um, he can't let go of the fact that it's for nothing, and when when he gives her gives her back it's like his acceptance that his life doesn't mean anything anymore mm -hmm. and um it's just quite that that scene is generally you know when when they have the you know the, the fight that is genuinely so kind of like such a sort of uh a powerful scene because definitely you just realize like how much just things have just got so just really fallen apart 100 <laughs> percent um, but yeah, we talked about them, so let's go on. Oh, well, I was gonna say, I love how he's loyal to his dad all the way up until he finds out all the bad stuff, and then he tells and he tells Scarlet Strait, and I agree with him on this. He's like, you know, you're just as bad as him for letting Walt do all this stuff. She should have reported him to the police straight away, like it's it's totally wrong. And the thing is, Scarlet could have just made up that story that she said at the end, say, you know, desperate drug dealer, blah 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 blah. You know, obviously being diagnosed with terminal cancer, you know, des well, which he obviously at the time he was saying about how desperate he was, but in reality, it was just all for him. Thing is, that could have got him barely any time in prison and he could have given the FBI all the names. So he probably would have been fine. But no, Walt wanted to do this. Walt wanted yeah. to be in charge and be the Gus Freeing and all that bollocks. And 
pointlessness. I think there is actually, again, I'm talking about Vault again now, but <laughs> there is an element of, um, I think he was quite, I think he was almost quite frustrated that he lived as long as he did. Because I think in the first like couple of seasons, he has this, this sort of belief that he's going to just die any moment, pretty much. Yeah. You know, the cancer's getting really bad. And there's that, there's that really brilliant episode, um, I think it's in season two, when, um, you know, he goes off for Jesse into a desert and they cook as much breath as they can. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's like this whole point, the whole thing where the, the, the RV, you know, stops working and they think they're just going to yeah. die in the desert. Um, and, um, you know, at this point, he, he sort of thinks that, you know, this is kind of like, he's got like, you know, a few however long left to live and it's like things on there aren't going to get too bad um before you know just die but then once he gets the results in the hospital that he goes back that it's the all clear you know when, when he's with his family he's already happy about it but the mm-hmm. moment he goes into the bathroom he's he's punching the the um is he punching the mirror because he's just really frustrated that oh it's just because i'm just gonna keep i'm gonna keep going and it's, yeah. he knows things are just going to get worse and worse, and and he's frustrated with the fact that he's kind of still alive, essentially. Yeah. Um, I mean, even at the end of series, in in the fly episode, he was like, oh, you know, when he was so tired, he was like, oh, there was a perfect moment where going on about how he could have died at different moments and when it would have been a perfect moment, and he said when he could hear Skylar singing uh, that um, hush little baby, don't you cry, by blah, mockingbird, um, not mockingbird, um, oh. I can't remember what it's called, but um, she was singing this song and um, he was like, oh, and he said that was the perfect time he could have died. Then at the end of the episode, you can see his conscience messing with him because the fly is the fly is sort of like his conscience and he sees a fly on the route on the scene and he's like, you know, he's annoyed at the fly. Um, So even though he never acts like any of this stuff bothers him, well, it doesn't in series five, but it seems like between series one and Probably near the, probably halfway through series four, a lot of this stuff does play on his conscience. But as soon as it's him versus Gus, big ego, blah blah, had to be the man. Uh, he uh, he thinks, oh, I don't care, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want at this point. Yeah, I think there's that. Um... Oh, it's funny the the, the fly. Um, I generally really like that episode, even though yeah, it's, it's like everyone's least favorite. Very... I I actually really like it. Um, I guess for the, for things like that, you know, because it, again, it's a it's a big kind of dialogue kind of episode, and um, mm-hmm. you know, he has that kind of heart to heart with Jesse going about, you know, oh yeah, that that moment would have been the perfect time to die, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, before we move on to the final character, I want to talk about. Then we can well, actually, let's just brush through the seasons first, right? Series one, only seven episodes, some pretty cool stuff. How, like, you know, you see the seeds being planted. Well, you know, he even in the first episode, you see him staring at his award at five in the morning. You see him feel really good when he stands up to those bullies. You're obviously rooting for him. And he, you know, when he first has to kills that crazy eight guy and strangles him, it's like he, he writes down, oh, what are the benefits? What are the bad things about keeping him alive or killing him? And it plays on him. Him and Jesse have funny arguments. Too cut. The, the scene where he's like, this is not meth. That oh, was yeah. legendary. Tuco's an absolute lunatic, hilarious. Um, that, and then that, the end... that season, that cliffhanger at the end of season one is so good. They're just like, you know, when 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 Tuco just, you know, he murders um, one of his um, one of his one of his men for like no reason, and yeah. they're just like, shit, who are we, who are we working for? And that's just it. Yeah. That's the end. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously series two, uh, decent fun. Walt and Jesse get any more arguments, but obviously it's Walt, Walt and Jesse heavy season. We get inv- we get introduced to Mike, Saul, Gus. Very interesting throughout the season. Obviously, I know Mike comes in right at the end, uh, towards the end of um, series two. Um, you know, um, yeah, there's some interesting stuff in there. The, as you said, the desert episode. Jane's cool. Her dad's cool. The fact that Walt didn't care when he blew when the planes crashed because of him not saving Jane is like the speech he says at the start of series three. I think to myself, what the hell are you going on about? Like legit him just being like, this is one of the least worst crashes. 
he's just saying that to try and justify it to himself. But yeah, series two, great too. Uh, series three, again, the universe expands even more. You know, we've got the uh, cousins doing stuff. Uh, they throw down with Hank. Hank obviously ends up not being able to walk at, at all, really. And he has to try and to get to walk again. And that's really interesting. Jesse killing the thugs and Brock and that. Um, well, obviously he doesn't kill Brock, but Brock and um, Jesse's new girlfriend gets introduced that Jesse's girlfriend's brother dies. Um, and then Gus is, you know, being like, oh, well, uh, Walt, I'm going to kill you. And then obviously Gail's there and then Jesse shoots Gail and it really plays on his mind. So series three is great. Pretty well, amazing. So got the, um, the, uh, the gang, you remember the, they had that intervention and, yeah, and that was really cool. The kid and all that kind of stuff, and then Jesse gets really mad and then you know, yeah. kills them. <laughs> yeah, well, cool. Walt saves him, and I really was rooting for. When I first saw that, I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "I was like, what?" And he's like, Pew! and then he's like, "Run!" <laughs> that was really cool. Uh, series four, amazing. The end of series four, man. That is some peak shit. How high the uh, states get built up, and then Walt laughing um, underneath the floorboards. That's really hilarious. Well quite uh where you can it's sort of like he's sort of gone out of reality it's like oh i, I don't need what the hell i don't even care but the thing is well i think Walt is doing this all as a manipulation thing because the only reason he um gus said that he'd only kill him if he kept trying to work with jesse pinkman so i think Walt sort of tried to start this himself because if he just has nothing to do with pinkman and doesn't cook anymore then gus isn't going to kill him but obviously gus shouldn't be making those threats um and then and then obviously the legendary you know then Gus is like whoa and then gets blown up and then the shot that was amazing half of his body being destroyed um series four oh wait sorry do you want to say about series four briefly um yeah yeah it's a such a brilliant uh it's like the the way it end way it ends um you kind of it's such a such a peak um yeah so you kind of just think to yourself like um you know if this is only season four where is it going to go next you know because it's just like yeah uh, it's so big you know that that Definitely. the way that the way it ends you know it, the way that it ends you know both um you know uh, the salamanca uh, and um and gus Fring, you know kind of like arc um is brilliant um and then Definitely. you know you know you know straight away then right well, you know so basically Walt's the king now you know <laughs> yeah, yeah the kingpin um but yeah there was a obviously the final scene you see how he um he's like it's over we're safe i won and i'm like shouldn't it be we all won well everyone's safe but whatever like but the thing is you can tell it's just like obviously he said we're safe he didn't just say about himself but then he said i won so like obviously the normal walter white cares about his family but the egotist is like i won i'm the best and obviously, then you the ending shot, you see the lily of the valley, and you're like, damn, so he did it. What a bastard. <laughs> the thing he was accusing Gus of, he did the Gus trying to say Gus to try to turn Jesse uh, against him. Gus uh, J Walt actually did that himself. So pretty <laughs> shocking. Um, all right then. So on to uh, series five. First half a bit weak. Uh, to be honest, the villain that was um, Jack, he's a decent villain, but not as nowhere near as good as Gus or Tuco. Um, obviously, Walt well, just being an egomaniac, wanting to have a business that's massive. And you you hear why he's so frustrated, because he goes on about how the Gretchen and Elliot's company, he left for five grand. And you see episodes, or was it in series three, where you see how like Walt had so many aspirations. And he's like, oh, we're going to need this study room for your, and you can do have a room for your art. We need to aim higher. But obviously, he doesn't aim higher, uh, which is fine. People, you know, live how you want to live and all that. That's absolutely fine. But obviously, Walt's frustrated that he didn't aim higher. And um, yeah, that, so anyway. That, uh, that, oh, sorry, I noticed that. But like um, that kind of revelation about like, um, you know, Gretchen and everything, the fact that, you know, literally, you know, he he settled for like five grand or something, and they're they're now like this massive company. You can yeah. kind of get. I feel like it makes it a lot more like um, you can kind of understand so much more why Walt did yeah. pretty much everything because you kind of realize like, you know, 
he he was so close to having everything to the point yeah. where you know it's just like i don't know it just adds so much that that tiny detail adds so much to his character and it, it really makes you changes how you look how you sort of see him i think yeah and the scene where he's like I'm in the empire business. So he doesn't even care about money anymore. All he cares about is like being the top dog and number one and his legacy going on forever. But um, yeah, so series five, the start was, it was pretty good, but not as good as series four. You, you know, you, the train thing was cool. Hank figuring out at the end, which is hilarious because Hank is like, oh, <laughs> you know, he keeps trying to find out then on some daft look he finds out in the book. Oh, should we talk about Hank briefly before we talk about the second half of Series 5? Hank is a legend, oh, man. Yeah. I love how he's, he's a macho, crazy guy at first and starts fights with criminals. And you know, I don't even think the people he started fighting in a bar was criminals, but he takes the mick out of Walt and everyone throws his weight around, thinks he's the man. Then he gets, obviously, struggles to walk. And then after that, he's um, he obviously has really bad anxiety, but then he just becomes more of like a regular, more reliable guy after he goes through the anxiety, sort of just like a regular dude who's just trying to do the right thing and isn't a lunatic who throws his weight around. Hmm. I do think that to to some extent you kind of do um kind of root for him in some in some He's the way. hero of the story, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, um it's definitely really sad, I think, when he dies. Um mm -hmm. even Walt even Walt is really sort of sad about it, is it? Yeah. Um you know there's so much like throughout the series there's so many times where he gets so close to finding out the truth um that it's so scary you know it's like like you know heart sort of pounding you know yeah. um and then when it finally all kind of just adds together he, it just because he looks at that that book in the you know in the bathroom and he just sort of realized oh shit like now it's actually you you knew you you know it's from the very start this is going to mm -hmm. happen. He's going to find out. But how is he going to find out? When is he going to find out? It's this whole like anticipation. Um, and it was just dumb luck, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, just like this. Uh, out of all the all the all the times when he almost got him, it was that you know. Like there was that that yeah. time when um, car crash. When they were, when they were in in the RV, and uh, you know he was shooting at them from the inside, from from the outside. Oh yeah. And they're so close to you know. That was amazing. That was such a cool scene. How Walt made Jesse get out of that one, but then Jesse suffered for Walt's staffness. <laughs> um, I was actually really against Hank when he beat the crap out of Jesse. I was quite annoyed. He should have just went in there and arrested him instead of beating him up. But obviously, I guess when someone gets like your partner's phone number, you're like, "What the fuck?" And you just want information soon as because like if they can get that, then they can get any information. But obviously, it's from Walt. It, Jesse's not some sort of doxing mastermind. Uh, but anyway, so Hank is. I think the way he dies, though, it's really cool. Like how he's like, you know, goes out on his sh shield and he's like, My name's Asex Trader, and you go fuck yourself. And then he's like, Well, um, he's like, Walt, this is one of the coolest lines ever in telly. He's like, Walt, you're the smartest guy I've ever met, but you're too stupid to see. He already made his mind up 10 minutes ago. Do what you're going to do. <laughs> like that was legendary shit, man. I that mean, was some cool was shit. Like out of all of the deaths, he's probably got one of the coolest deaths, I think, probably. Yeah, he goes out on his high horse. He doesn't get blown up in a nursing home. He doesn't get shot by... He doesn't get shot in the desert. He Well, he just gets shot in the desert, but he goes yeah, he out does. like... <laughs> yeah. He, that's... A, yeah, he, he goes out like a champ. He goes out like a champ. And I think as well, it's just kind of like Walt's kind of like insistence for him to like not... <laughs> That, that's throughout that whole episode he's just the entire time he's like completely um like not thinking rationally at all like he's constantly sort of in, in, in total denial about everything um like you know mm -hmm. he, he has no kind of thought that um you know he's obviously gonna die you know hank's obviously mm -hmm. gonna die but he just you know in his head he's like no he's not gonna you know and it's like yeah he thinks i'm like, smart i can get him out of this yeah. You know, and then and you know again it, it goes it escalates even worse than with the family. The whole time, the whole episode is just it's just in total denial, and everything is just completely falling apart for him. Yeah, um, but yeah, series five, second half, absolutely amazing. Uh, ends amazingly too. How well, he that, goes back. That's um that sequence. Um, do you remember the, the sequence of the like um they he gets all those people murdered. Like the yeah, that was, that was that. 
in the um in the like prison and stuff. All of Mike's one. guys, yeah, all the people Mike knows. Yeah, like that whole sequence is brilliant. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it ends great. You know, we he finally reveals to Sky like I did it for me. I felt alive. Blah blah blah. So that was really cool. The very ending was amazing. That was probably that. Apart from the original Fools and Horses ending, that is the best ending to a show ever. But the thing is, Fools and Horses had another ending because they brought th three episodes back, and it wasn't anywhere near as good. But apart from the original Fools and Horses ending. That Breaking Bad ending is the best ever. It was legendary. It was so cool. Like how what you think, what, what is Walt going to do? He's such a loose unit. What's even his plan to get all these uh, crazy evil bikers? And obviously his plan worked out really well. And I like how like they're like, okay, we're going to kill you, Walt. Um, and he, But he gets back his car keys really slowly. And then he's like, give me Pinkman. And then he tackles Jesse and you think, oh, is he actually going to kill Jesse? Then he... then. Jesse gets to strangle Todd for killing his uh, partner. And, uh, yep, yeah, Walt grab, look, grabs the machine and then looks at his stomach and, I guess I got what I deserved. Doesn't care at all. Doesn't give a fuck. He's dead. Uh, he went out like a champ pretty much in his mind. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, there was another point. Oh, yeah, one lap. Before we move on to better course, all right. Uh, worst things Walt's done in your opinion? Hmm. I mean, poisoning the the kid is pretty. Yeah, that's number one. Despicable. Um. Hmm, God, I'm trying to think. I feel like um. Yeah, let, letting Jesse. Uh, Jesse, what's she called? Um, Jane. Jane. I think letting her die. That's quite horrible. Um. I think him killing Mike was stupid because all Mike did was say to him, like, you had to be the man and told him straight. And then he yeah. just then he just shot Mike. And I'm like, are you all right, Walt? And then he killed all, got all those dudes in prison killed. But I'm thinking, Walt, it doesn't matter if you get caught because you're going to die. And even if that's the case, you've got to trust Mike that, well, just do the escape thing. Why didn't Walt just, he had 80 million. Why didn't he just do that escape thing if he was worried? Mike, Mike was going to leave. Jesse was, Walt was trying to get Jesse to leave. Why didn't Walt just leave himself? Ridiculous. Hmm. But, um, oh, to... I was going to say, getting Mike's friends killed was disgusting. That was evil of him. Because they all suffered horrifically. Like, one of them got burnt alive. Like, bloody hell. And Walt just didn't seem to care. Hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, no apologies from Walt. All I'll say is, to sum up the show, we see a regular dude pretty much who didn't really do a lot with his life, want to do something that only a few people would know about in the grand scheme of things. And once casual people did find out, thought, what a fucking piece of shit. But Walt wanted to do something like amazing that he could have a legacy for, because everyone's talking about the Heisenberg. But if he was real, we'd all just think, what a piece of shit. Like, you know, like you feel bad for him, but like that isn't a legacy. But like, obviously, that Walt loves that legacy, wants to be remembered. But in reality, he should have just, you know, accepted the money off Gretchen and Elliot, and yeah. But that would have made for a boring show. How he, how he, because the thing is, right, Walt. I know there's we've had shows in the past like Sopranos where I won't spoil anything if you are ever going to watch it. But Tony Soprano starts off as a pretty evil guy and just becomes like sort of better, but more evil and petty, and then the show just sort of ends. It does end, like, it does have a proper ending, but it just sort of like, all right, it's over now. It's sort of like you're watching, like, you're just watching a slice of life, and then that slice of life is over. Um, well, Breaking Bad feels like a proper start to end. And Tony Soprano, there is things unique about the Sopranos, but, like, you, you've got a dude who's a mafia boss who's already a bad guy who just becomes worse, pretty much, but somewhat better throughout the show, but then worse. Uh, yeah, well, Walter White... What makes, like, Sorry, I was just you, but I think what makes Walt White so interesting is that he is just a normal guy, but just yeah, you know, just not who you expect to to be Heisenberg. <laughs> exactly, and like a chemical reaction, like he explains, chemistry is about elements changing and exploding and whatever. And Walter White exploded all over the scene, and he affected so many. If it was just himself and criminals, it was affecting. It wouldn't be too bad, but he pretty much like affected loads of things and loads of people. But he just didn't care. Um, oh, yeah. See, one, of the, one more thing I wanted to kind of mention. I guess it kind of does sort of 
it's mm. it's relevant to both um breaking bad and both of soul but is what i really like and this is something i, I don't think i hear much people, many people go on about but like how reserved the strong language is because although it's like way 18 there's hardly ever any strong language but when when they swear like when they say like the f like the f word or whatever it's really impactful mm. Um, and it's it really feels like a it really feels like a big punch, like one of my yeah. one, of the, one of the best scenes I think for that was when I think it's in season two with Gretchen and she says I feel so sorry fuck for you, you. <laughs> yeah yes fuck you <laughs> I love that scene so much <sighs> Man, that was just that was so cool because he just looks so angry and he's just like <laughs> fuck you. Because you know, he's like... deep, deep down, like, Gretchen is a big reason why he ended up going, you know, ending up where he was, really. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's quite funny how he gets the upper hand on Gretchen and Elliot and makes them look like the biggest buffoons ever with Badger and what's-his-face, Badger and Skinny P. That was oh, yeah, so funny. Those, <laughs> the, those, like, those torches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was so <laughs> funny, man. That was just like, Walt pretty much just mugged them off in the funniest, biggest way possible. Um, and the thing is, even if they didn't give the money, even if they figured out Walt's plan, it doesn't matter because Walt thinks it's going to go. He's dying knowing that that money is going to go to his family. So, um, but yeah, overall, Breaking Bad, ten out of ten, second best show of all time behind Fools and Horses. Absolutely legendary beast. Uh, love it. Absolutely phenomenal. There ain't much bad. Thing is, uh, there's people who like. I feel like you have to, you do have to be a certain type of film buff to enjoy it. Like there are different types of people, and I feel like you have to be very character or character um, like appeal. Like you have to characters have to appeal to you because there's mm. some people I've tried to get to watch Breaking Bad, and they've said they've either said it's good but I can't get into it, or it's so so boring I'm just not interested. And it's probably in that case, they would hate vocal soul. <laughs> yeah, no, I, just no, I actually, it, isn't it pretty much? No, I actually know one person who didn't like Breaking Bad because they just thought it was silly daftness and unapplicable, but they liked Better Call Saul because it was more realistic and more drama orientated. Um, but yeah, that person didn't like Fools and Horses, so they got shit taste. Nah, but, <laughs> but pretty much, and they didn't even like Breaking Bad, so that's even shit a taste. But uh, no, I'm messing. But the thing is, um, it's you do have to, it's very character. Like the thing is, most reviews, like, did a one division review, it lasted for like half an hour. We could pretty much talk about Breaking Bad for another hour if we wanted to go into detail about how, because that's how amazing the characters are structured. That's how, oh, yeah, totally. well, um, and you George, could a, you could do a podcast of just about how good it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm trying to think what's bad about it. Um, man, the breaking part, the breaking, uh, the breaking's bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think what is really though the, I did mention about how Marie wasn't really Marie and Walt Jr. and Skylar could be better. Jack wasn't really the best villain, he was just sort of a boring guy. I guess Todd and Lydia were a bit bland in some aspects. I did um, sort of, to some degree, I feel as though um the airplane crash is slightly contrived. What does contrive mean? Um Not basically forced. Yeah, like I feel like I don't know. There's, I don't mind it too much, but I feel like, um, oh yeah, you know, because his daughter died, that means then that he, he crashes the plane. I mean, you know, I can totally understand that why it happened, but it feels a little bit. I don't know. They probably wouldn't have let him back to work so quick because it's such a responsible job. Or they might have made him. Re they might have like. I don't know if they have furlough in America, but like they would have probably paid him a massive load of money to like keep him at home for ages to, and probably would have done loads of tests on him, wouldn't they? To see if he was ready to do this. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's the thing, yeah. But yeah, overall, I mean, I'll give it ten out of ten. What would you give it? Oh, totally, yeah, ten out of ten, no, um, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, every, every, I mean, every episode is a classic. I think pretty much. Yeah, I mean, there aren't really there aren't really many bad things that you can say about it, in my opinion. If you don't like characters, you probably won't like it that much. I don't know. If you prefer action, you might not be able to get into it. I don't know. Um, all right, George said, I've never heard of the show, Breaking Bad. Never heard of it. Just call Paul. Yep, the C word. I, I did drop the C bomb, which I don't really uh, 
like doing, but um, I just thought, like, I don't know, yeah, whoops. Jessie sounds like a girl. Well, I think it's more girly when people are called Jess. Jessie sounds sort of like, you know, Jesse, uh, Jesse James. You know, it sounds cool. Like the cow. Jesse expects to poo. Jesse was getting high F. James equals toothless. What are you going on about? Do you mean ruthless? Because I was having a go at Jesse earlier. I am your God. Oh, no. Make him a cripple. Yeah, in re re reference to the sore thing. Who's the bald dude, Walter White? Um, and I'm not looking at the next comment because that's just stupidness. <laughs> uh, better call Greg. Uh, I don't like either. George, I'm not going to, honestly, One Division is better than Breaking Shot. Um, America that, shoot. That is, is objectively wrong. Yes. I mean, I'm <laughs> so, thing is, like, objectivity or whatever you want to say, as a human race, you look at what the vast majority of experts enjoy. And the vast majority of film experts say that Breaking Bad is a top five show of all time. And a lot of people, a lot of people do like WandaVision, but I just sort of, subjectively, it ain't really for me, but objectively, it's like, you know, kind of good until the yeah, end. But anyway. I, mean, I, I, I genuinely really dislike the ending, and I feel like yeah, so, much, um, it was quite so boring. much potential was lost. And I think it's like a five, like a five out of ten. Oh, that's a bit harsh. I have it seven point five. Fair enough. I can maybe, see maybe you're... six. Maybe 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 a low six. Problem is with George. I know it's weird to bring up George, like you know what people think and whatever. Oh, George, but all I'm saying, better. everyone, all I'm saying is, do not people who say One Division is better than Breaking Shot, don't listen to them because legit, like George says that Doctor Who's the best show ever. And I'm not trying to slight you, George. You're a great friend, but like. Don't listen to him. No, I'm messing, I'm messing. Each to their own and each to their own. Well, I mean, that's, but, that's interesting, though. I mean, I wonder, like, if you say Doctor Who's your fate is, like, the best show, what what sort of, like... What? What? Doctor, <laughs> what, 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 who is showrunner? What, like, era? Because How just, it? they're so different. Like, the, the Russell T. Davis era is, like, so completely removed from, like, Moffat, and then the new one is... is don't else. spoil it, don't spoil... Well... <laughs> I'm only going to watch it. I'm on series seven, basically. I got to series seven and watched Asylum of the Dark. So I was like, what a load of shit. And then I've tried to chip through things a little bit. And it's series seven has been all right. Obviously, George has put some comments down. My far, uh, Doctor. Okay. Um, anyway, we'll move on I to mean, Better Call. Yeah, I'd say David Tennant era is probably my favorite. Yeah. I mean, series four was amazing, and the tenant specials were pretty good. But, but like um, the master, the master is, is fantastic as well. Yeah, Sim, he's quite a good banter. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I'm not not now. This ain't. I don't mean to keep going on about George's taste and all that, but <laughs> all sort of mixes up how he subjectively feels about something for something objectively. So like, I can't get into a bloody um, uh, uh what's it called? Um, I struggled a bit with the Peaky Blinders, but that's objectively good. I could not get into The Wire. I tried hard, and it's objectively good. I just couldn't. Uh, Boardwalk Empire, objectively good. Couldn't get into it. But George sort of thinks if he can't... And he hasn't even tried watching Breaking Bad, but George sort of thinks if he doesn't like it subjectively, then it's objectively bad. That's sort of... There's meant to be different because it's completely different people. So show. Okay, whatever. Anyway, it's gone to Better Call Saul now. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't saying that as a, as a, um, a dig at it. I was just saying that I out of interest like what would be the but no whatever <laughs> uh but anyway let's get into better call Saul. so we start off seeing Saul as someone um mad different really when you think about it like the dude in you don't see this dude's home life in breaking bad you sort of just see him like plotting and scheming and farting around and all that jazz while um oh man what why is my logic tech gone out of focus what the hell is going on i think i need to get really close <laughs> There we go. Um, all right, then. Anyway, so as I say, we didn't get to see his home life before, but now we see that he was a regular guy. He wasn't just mad, hustler, schemer. Well, he was a schemer, but we'll get onto that in a bit. Um, but pretty much, he's a dude who... I, wa I watched the Family Guy Breaking Bad, but that was only like a two-second segment, but whatever. Um, so pretty much, it's like... He was a totally different guy. He's trying to be a regular lawyer and it doesn't work. He's always in his brother's shadow, as you said at the start of the podcast, William. And he always feels like he has something to prove. His brother doesn't let... He never... Any of his mistakes that he made in the past never get let go of. But I think he, his mom's sort of to blame because on his mom's deathbed, 
Chucky's obviously sitting by her and caring about her more, but his mom's like, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, and then dies. And Chuck's like so bitter about it. But if that was me, if my mom said my sibling's name instead of my name, I wouldn't really care. I'd just be sad that they died. I'd just be like, damn. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just be really upset that they died. And to be honest, so Jimmy is sort of bitter in some senses, but obviously Jimmy and Chuck's mom giving Jimmy slack when Jimmy fucked up and drank loads or was a tit. Um, you know, it was like, it, it's sort of like it, Chuck is sort of jealous, but Chuck's so much more successful, but Jimmy isn't jealous, but he sort of like is angry that all his mistakes are following him. Like, remember the breakdown in the old people's home when he's like, I pulled through a sunroof and now I'm here. <laughs> <sighs> and there were kids in the back, which is quite horrific and quite a shame. Um, <laughs> But yeah, oh Jimmy Woo. Anyway, what do you want to say about Saul? Sorry, I, I babbled on for like fifty years. What about the, the, the just like the series in general? Um, um, yeah, more as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's so funny because, uh, like I said, like I said before, like with um, Saul Goodman as a character in Breaking Bad, I didn't really think of him as being kind of like a um, someone that could really be strong enough to actually, you know. Mm. Um, lead a, a show on his own um yeah but like from really early on in the beginning i think within like the first couple of episodes i was already really hooked on it and it was like mm -hmm. um shit this is actually this is actually brilliant um i actually might like it maybe a little bit more than breaking bad even um subjectively or objectively would you say uh i'd say probably subjectively i can understand people not liking it as much um yeah. but it, it just appeals to me a lot because i mean i love the the character, you know, character study, you know, yeah, like character driven things. Um, and I think it's so cool that, um, you know, I think it's, there's a lot of, I guess, fan service for people that love Breaking Bad. And I think in a good way, I mean, I think fan service can be good. Um, and I feel like you get to learn, I think it's, there's enough in it um, that makes you kind of, it makes you appreciate Breaking Bad more with a lot of the characters, especially yeah. like later on. But at the same mm -hmm. time, it's completely its own thing as well. And it doesn't try and be the same kind of show. There isn't really a lot of like, you know, um death like you know, kind of deaths or anything like that. I mean there was the occasional stuff, but like there is that's not the central focus of the show. It's it's mostly just, you know, character and you know, the the drama and there's so many genuinely awkward moments um and yeah. or like you know in like interactions and confrontations which are just kind of that build up and it's it's sometimes painful to watch but in a good way you know like yeah. some of the some of the um, kind of like you know just some of the drama that happens <laughs> you know you know like when he gets the job at davis and maine this is when i sort of felt like oh jimmy what the fuck are you doing like, why doesn't he want the job here what is your problem son but like he was when he starts playing the bagpipes and he says, Oh yeah, I blocked I blocked the toilet. Oh yeah, I didn't flush the toilet. I keep pulling in the toilet and not blocking it because we're losing a few millimeters of water. And it's just so funny. It's like, why don't you want this job? You can make so much money. You don't have to work for Chuck, do you, buffoon? But he's I love like that. I love that uh, scene so much. There's that's one of the things as well with Break with um Vocal Soul. There were so many like montage scenes, and they're so fun. Um like things like that, like that one. So, but it, when he he has like he has all these like really colourful uh, shirts and uh, yeah, anyway, he does it. He does as much as he possibly can just to, to get fired so that he can keep the car and, <laughs> yeah. and so because like, it's like, um, well, I mean, isn't it? Because the reason why I mean the only reason why like things were bad for him there wasn't it was because he just in passing just said, oh, we should make a commercial, and he didn't like consults consult them yeah he just, just did it but it was a good commercial. commercial it was a good commercial but like he should have I think his lawyers there probably making handsome money so that's the problem we saw though he just wants to plot and scheme and like do do everything himself and be his own boss oh, that's yeah. his problem I feel like I feel like he just schemes and does the kind of like the dirty version of whatever hmm. he's doing even when he doesn't have to he just yeah because that's what's not, what comes naturally to him you're always it's scheming. so odd um, so like even that, like it's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna scheme and I'm gonna and the stuff that he does, like when he's doing the commercial, um, like he gets that he that guy that pretends to be a veteran and 
he makes up this whole story in the school about oh yeah that was this, that was really bad <laughs> this guy that that apparently went to the school just so they can because he can't be bothered to get like permission or anything like that <laughs> yeah. it's so good and then and but yeah. then when, he, when he's talking about that guy no that was so funny though with the with the veteran when he's like when he comes in, he's like, you're just a piece of shit. How dare you? I'll let you film here. And then the other person, he's like, oh, yes, this person, he came to this school. And then someone said, then one of his film people said, isn't he British? And then he lied on the on the front and was like, oh, yeah, but he came to school here. Look it up. Albuquerque, New Mexico, blah, 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 blah. You know, <laughs> so it's cool how he can like lie on the fly. Just shutting my window. Um, I was going to say, though, right, something else that I really do like. Um, oh yeah, the bagpipe scene, which was foreshadowed, and he's like, hmm, hmm, and he's like, oh, because literally, right, years ago, um, went to a wedding in 2014, and the bagpipes again, fair play if you want to play bagpipes, whatever, but like, they were so bloody loud, it was unreal. It's like, I it just made me laugh all the more that it was like, he's like, why is that noise? Why is that noise? And he's like, Jimmy, what the hell? He's like, well, it's like you letting off some steam with a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. And, the, and what I love about it is like there's there's a lot of things like that. Like that was um, from like several episodes before. He's going on about, you know, laying off steam with a guitar. Yeah. And then he, he calls back, you know, like several episodes later. <laughs> it was so funny. Definitely. But yeah, no, there's, there's so many. Um, I just love this. I just love the pacing and the style of the of um, the show. Um there's so much of it. I think it was there's something about I think something I wanted to say about the most recent season. I can't remember what it was now. Something about oh, something that he does. I can't remember though. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> when he sends the hookers to Howard's table or throws a oh bowling ball. Oh my god, that, that is amazing. That when, was so. Yeah, that's, funny. that's the thing. The what I love. There's um one of my favorite episodes from that season, uh, the most recent one. Uh, you know, it just starts off, and he's got these. He's getting these bowling balls. You have no idea why he's doing this. You know, it's just yeah. This. Um, and then, oh, there's so much of that as well. Like, you know, they'll start off the episode. You're left completely in the dark. You have no idea what he's what he's doing, but you know he's scheming. He's going to do something. And there's so much of that throughout the series. And there was that. Yeah, there's that episode. There's that episode where he's just, he's going around with these balls. You're like, what was he doing? And at first, you think that it's gonna he's gonna like do something with Kim. You know, it's like. He's, he's going to help her with something, with her work. That's kind of what you think. But at the very end, mm. you see that he's he's smashing um, Howard's car. Yeah. <laughs> just, literally just to piss him off because he offered him the job. And then, yeah, then, then the hook is. What, then why do you think he was so like, annoyed that he, Howard didn't give him the job? Is it because Howard's downplayed him in the past? Or is it because, I don't know, Howard agreed with Chuck to not let him have the well, job near the end of Series 1? or? I think it's because, like mm -hmm. in that, I think it's in the following episode when he has that big um, kind of like breakdown in the court and he just shouts at him and he kind of, I think he pretty much kind of explains it there. But basically, I think he's just kind of, he's realized of all these years, of all, of all these years, and he's been, he's, he, do, he, has, he doesn't know, he's, he's trying to, to, you know, say he's constantly been in his brother's shadow. And I think at the end of, of season four, he's kind of, he's given up to, entirely on that. He's, He's finally got back into becoming a lawyer, and it's like, oh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm changing my name. I'm I'm not going to pretend to be my brother anymore. I'm I'm Saul Goodman, and the the moment that he's Saul Goodman, he becomes really successful. They start getting noticed, and then Howard's like, he then after all these years, he then values him and thinks, oh, oh yeah, you know what? And he's and he's like, you know what? I'm better than you now. And it's like piss. Yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Like Fair he, play. He says, when he when he shouts, he says, "I'm a god! Lightning comes out of my fingers!" You know. <laughs> yeah, I think what pushed him over the edge was when he got turned down in the interview. Um, he had an interview with some people, and then he he went berserk. Oh, yeah. and was like, they're not going to forget. Blah, 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 blah. And I had to go at her. Um, what else was there when he went? When he really? Uh, I'm trying to think. There was something else when when I was like, "What the hell are you doing, Saul?" Um uh, oh man, I can't remember off the top of my head. But um oh yeah, what did you you know something else that was funny when he changed every single uh 
num number instead of 1216 it was 1261 or something or the other way around that was so funny and chuck not being able to think he made a mistake but then obviously it was saw being a twat that was so funny <laughs> oh god yeah that's so good and, and it's it's so funny like um when um you know when they have that big confrontation and kim's there and um she kind of like you know she's she naturally she's always defending jimmy but she knows like deep down oh yeah he's he has done this he would do yeah. this you know <laughs> definitely it's quite cool how both the mcgill brothers are like insanely smart in their own ways like jimmy sort of on the fly sort of put trust into people like when he told that person behind the counter to lie for him saying he wasn't here printing stuff but ha um, Chuck is sort of like more of an actor, like when he was acting mental and like get le sort of leading people into a trap and he gets them that way. Like when Jimmy went over to check out how it was and then they recorded it and then Jimmy just went berserk and yeah, all that. Mm. But it's funny how all this is just all the stuff that Chuck does is just so Jimmy doesn't become a lawyer. It's not like he wants to ruin his life. He just wants Jimmy to stay out of something that he has worked so hard to like make decent. But the thing is, I'm not being mean to. Well, actually, Chuck is sort of full of shit because I know everyone's entitled to a lawyer, but they're defending evil people sometimes. I know they can't help it, but like you can't be that whim whimsy about the law because they're defending evil people sometimes. And like, so and even if they weren't, at the end of the day, Saul he worked hard for it. He earned it. He grafted, so like, why is Chuck begrudging him for that? Know, it's I just think, so stupid. I think as well, like, I think Chuck is generally really manipulative and horrible to to Jimmy. Yeah, um, I think he tries to justify it. He tries like to be that, like, oh. I think there's something quite sort of so like, just so horrible. Like that, the last thing that he ever really ever says to him is like, you know, you've you've never you never really meant that much to me. <laughs> oh yeah, so, that was brutal. So horrible. <laughs> yeah, that truly was mean. But I mean, you know, because Jimmy came and apologized to him again. But the thing is, it's it's Chuck's own fault for like not his own fault fully. But you know how it's sort of like it's his all this electricity stuff was all on Chuck. Like it wasn't it wasn't, and it's all in his head. And Chuck can't accept that. And that's why Chuck's like. Stop pretending you're going to change when you're never going to change. And I'm thinking, Jimmy is still a bit of a Colin scheming idiot, but it's not like he's throwing up all the time and uh, on alcohol all the time still and being a buffoon. Like, Chuck needs to let go of some stuff, unless Jimmy, like, went around assaulting people, doing really evil things. I don't see why Chuck couldn't let go of it, but he never can. They're both jealous of each other in some way, shape, or form, except Jimmy sort of can look past it a bit while Chuck is sort of, like, acts like he's not bothered, but he's really bitter deep down. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think sort of Chuck is so in denial. Um, where yeah. I feel like Jimmy, Jimmy has no um, pretense of. I think he 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 knows who he is. That Jimmy, yeah. I think. Um, and I think he's he's totally. I mean, well, by the end of it, I mean he's totally. Um, he's done with pretending to be something else. He knows yeah. who he is, and that's just he's he's okay with that. Because he knows that he's just a crook and that's what's going to make him money and that's what's going to make him successful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was going to say, though, like the thing is with Jimmy, he he still, you still sort, you root for him a lot more than you root for Walt, don't you? Because like, Walt, yeah. okay, you, you root for Walt more at first, but then when Walt does more and more bad stuff, it's all for his ego. Well, Jimmy... He's really trying hard to be a good guy, like, you know, doing stuff for the old people and um, all this jazz and trying to and help out. As well, I mean, he didn't, uh, he's, he hasn't, he, he didn't willingly work with the cartel. He's been, he was forced in, into working with the cartel. Oh, so yeah, it was he, more. He, he, he generally didn't, in. he didn't want to actually, you know, he, he tried everything he could to get out of it. And yeah, you know, I think as well, like that. That um, I mean, season five was just so there's so much, <laughs> so much happened in season five. But like, um, I think that moment, the, the moment in the desert, I think it's it's so funny because, um, well, not funny, but it's interesting because, um, you know, 
by the end of it, I mean, Walter, well, like, there were so many events, so many things like that happened where it was just like, that kind of just meant nothing to him. But mm-hmm. for Jimmy, like, you kind of forget about it, but like, he has never experienced anything like that. When, when yeah. you know, all those people in the desert are like murdered in front of him, like, he's never actually ever seen anything like that. And it's something that genuinely sticks with him. Um, yeah. And um, you kind of just realize, like, Compared to Walt, he is he is just a normal guy, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I think something interesting with his character is how it's like he um, it's sort of it's sort of big explosions which change him rather than little bits at a time. It's sort of like li- okay, little thing, little thing, little thing, little thing. Then he explodes, and little thing, little thing, little thing, little thing. But he sort of goes back and forth when he's being morally decent or morally bad. He hasn't really done anything like horrific in the show. Um, apart from not helping Lalo, but as you said, he was forced into it. He didn't want to do it. So mm. I feel um. like even if he do, if he, if he ever does anything like bad, and he does a lot of bad things, he always he always does something that makes you like him at the end of the day. I think. Yeah. He's just too, he's just too likable. I think. Hmm. Um, I was favorite... going to. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh no, go on, go on. It doesn't matter. One of my favorite moments. Um in the series um again what i really like about it there's so much that's kind of um that builds up throughout the series um there is that you know when he starts selling phones and um you know he he, it's like you know he's got like um he makes so much money he does it really well and then those thugs just steal everything and beat him up and Mm -hmm. um you feel so bad for him at that point it's just such a like all of that is just absolutely for nothing and then yeah that that is, it feels so good then in as a couple of episodes later when um you know he they <laughs> he cut he kidnaps them he has he has them hanging hanging um like pinatas he's got this massive bat yeah and you know he says you're not going to you know mess with me again you know it's just like such a good it's, no, it's, it's really like funny. so much like payback it feels so good that that's um that's one of my favorite moments i think in the series yeah, it was quite legendary. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say some of his schemes. It's cool how like with that Marco dude, you see some of his schemes, like the um the thing about this weird coin, and he's like this absolutely destroyed coin. He's like, it's worth so much because John F. Kennedy's facing the other way, and then they him and Marco go back and forth, and then he's like, Oh yeah, um, cool, cool, yep, all right, oh crap, I need to get this. Okay, cool. And then they get in an argument, and then they make like a hundred dollars out of this bum for paying for like this really old riffy coin and um there was another bit where but oh yeah i was gonna say you know with marco it's interesting because saul sort of moved on from that life while marco even though he's making decent money at the job he was doing he got a high off of doing all these schemes but in the end he got a heart attack sadly and Hmm. he but but the the thing he said before he died wasn't like i'd tell my Obviously, he didn't have a wife or kids, but he had like a family. He still had a sister, and I'm, I think his parents might have been live. I think he had a niece or nephew too. Um, he he was like, oh, you know, this. He didn't say anything about them. He was just like, this has been the best week of my life. Dead. That's it. Yeah. And that's all your life was revolved around scheming. And I think that was quite deep, really. He wasn't scheming for the money. He was scheming for the high of ske- getting away with the scheme. It was quite. Um, I haven't really seen many characters who just scheme for the sake of scheming. So that was quite. Cool, I mean, really. he does that with. I mean, he does that with Kim as well, doesn't he? Um, where he just like when they just pretend to be somebody else and. Uh, oh yeah, they, yeah. They, they scam that that um, like investor guy. guy, and it's so it, it's it's quite, I, I, it's it's quite good because I mean, you know he's he's like a real asshole and he has more money than than sense. So yeah. the fact that they just like, you know, whip him off is actually just really funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. But they're doing it for the laughs. They're not doing it for like, yeah. there's no, there's that no isn't way. all they have in life. Like that That's Marco. The That's the interesting thing about it, isn't it? That, that aspect of it where it's just a high of just kind of like scheming. Yeah. And and that I kind of, I guess that kind of explains why, why he, why Jimmy does what he does is not just because he has to like like with that you know doing the commercial and everything like there's there's a legitimate way that he could have done that but that he lives for that those schemes he lives for being that crook you know 100 percent 
Um, but there was one other point I was going to make. Oh yeah, some of the references to like you know how he um he says, "Oh, did Lalo? What what is it about Lalo when he first gets kidnapped?" That was cool because that was like back in two oh nine, and Lalo wasn't introduced till like what twenty eighteen. Um, uh, in in the in real time, I don't mean in the story. Obviously, in the story, it's like two thousand three or whatever. Um, and the thing where he's like, oh, I pretended to be Kevin Costner, and then you actually see in ep- that episode with Marco that the woman's like, You're not Kevin Costner, and then they're right, quit and leave. So I like those little references. Um, I think we've talked about Saul a lot. Do you want to move on to Marco? Have you got much more you want to say? Or go, yeah, yeah, go on. I mean, um, as much as I could go on about writing, I, I love writing about it, so it's mad like how much, um, I can go on even more about right, uh, right, uh, vocal soul. Um, and we've only just talked about him. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. feel like we probably should move on. Um, to other characters, I suppose. <laughs> so, um, Mike, he actually is a totally different guy in this. He's just sort of some dude who's bouncing around trying to do jobs occasionally while he's working on the security stand for the police. Well, the, the car ticket thing. Um, he's a real perfectionist, isn't he? I mean, because in later series, you see him being like, Your cameras aren't on right, you, there's a blind spot on this camera, the door's really easy to access. And uh, he's quite, you see him like be quite a manipulator, not a massive manipulator, he's just doing his job for Gus. Mm. But even that, he's like, I'm a proud investigator and I'm trying to get justice. And he's so good at acting and making up stories. And you don't really see that side of him in Breaking Bad. You you yeah, see this side of him in Better Call Saul. What I like about what they do with him in Better Call Saul is that he, um, he's kind of like the perfect kind of like, I mm. guess, employee for... Um, Gus because yeah. they're quite similar in a lot of ways like they'll mm-hmm. just get the job done w- whatever it is it's like he'll do it the in the sort of legitimate professional way um, yeah. and um, wherever he is he's always you know he's always kind of like I guess the busybody you know he'll kind of um, I really love that uh, scene when he's in the kind of I don't know if it's like a warehouse but it's like you know he's got that hard hat on he's just kind of going he's just you know, essentially just sort of like calling everybody out on Yeah, saying about how shit not playing by protocols and you know. Yeah. Very interesting. Um and it was what's quite... interesting as well with with Mike is that I mean he does have a there is more of a, a sensitive side to him in this in, in in vocal soul. I feel like um you know when he has to kill um the uh Verna. Yeah like he really he he really uh felt like shit doing that um yeah like there's a, i think in the following episode when uh um, he punched each punch sucker punched the guy didn't he because they were like he had to go didn't he and then he was like yeah Phew. yeah he, he hated that you know like yeah. but then the other guy you know went up to him and said you know he was uh ten thousand times more you know more of a man than you were you ever be kind of thing yeah um, yeah and he, he's and right then, yeah that guy. and and um you know he kind of um i mean he almost what he almost quits isn't he you know like at that point Mm -hmm. i like how mike like hit the guy who was agreeing with mike's decision but then did absolutely nothing to the guy who said he's way better than you you prick and then what i mean i really uh that's really interesting like mike reacted that way yeah well you kind of um i guess because he knows he knows it's true yeah yeah definitely um the scene where he kills those cops, that's quite cool. Like, you think he's totally drunk. And then uh, then he's like, okay, boys. Psh, psh, psh. That was cool to see him get his revenge. And then, obviously, he breaks down to uh, his daughter-in-law and um, is really upset about the whole situation and says, you know, about how Mike himself was actually the dirty cop and uh, Matty was totally fine. And Mike was like, I broke my boy. That was one of the saddest scenes I've ever seen. That was And a character like that who's been established for... All the years of Breaking Bad and up until this point in the uh, been, uh, in the Gilligan cinematic universe, um, it's it's like to see him break down is crazy, you know. Yeah, I think yeah, that's it's um, it's mad how much they they kind of do with him. I think like he's uh, mm-hmm. he's um, a much more kind of uh, kind of emotional character. I think in yeah. uh, in in Vocal Soul. Um, there's so many great moments with it, and 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 I also really like as well like the, um, 
you know, he does do quite a few things that are just sort of genuinely, um, I guess, sort of just trying to help, like, the community and stuff. Like, I think he does that. Doesn't he, um, t- like, he does, like, um, he does, like, concrete or something for a school. Um, I can't remember him doing all this good stuff. I okay. can't really remember it. There's like occasional things like that. I can't remember what it was, but the Mike in Breaking Bad wouldn't have done anything charitable. <laughs> so um, I think the Verna thing was the thing that really changed him into a cold machine. I think that yeah. really shook him up having to kill someone who really genuinely liked and respected. That was uh, quite a shame. Um, but is there a lot more to say about Mike? I mean, to be honest, it's quite sad to see him. Well, you know that he's going to survive in the end, but. It's crazy to see all the stuff he goes through in Better Call Saul just to know that he gets shot by a wall and then turned into acid and then that's the end and his granddaughter will never know whatever the hell happened to him. Uh, I mean, it's just quite depressing, really. Mm. Uh, but obviously, yeah, no, it's I, just... I, I even though it's so, just a show, you sort of, like, it, feel it, for it, him a bit. It makes it, it makes it... It makes, like, I think his death in Breaking Bad feel... You feel so much worse for him then because... Because you care about him in in Virgil Soul, it's just you just yeah. I think the whole time, like throughout the whole series, I'm always sort of thinking, it just ends so shit for him. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing is, I mentioned earlier about how I think thought Mike was an idiot, and he still is a bit of an idiot doing the stuff he's done. But Better Call Saul makes me like him a lot. I like him in Breaking Bad, and he's an amazing character. But Better Call Saul makes me like the character even more, and makes character even even more amazing than it already is. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess there are some. There are a lot of characters in uh, Vocal Soul that are like you know just just solely from Vocal Soul as well that are mm-hmm. also brilliant. Um, I really like. Um, oh, I for, actually forgot what he's called. The... Ignacio Varga. Yeah, like he's he's great. He's a great character. Um, again, I think he's kind of. He's not. He's not like. He's quite a um, a normal guy as well. I think. Yeah, he just seems quite um, casual, doesn't he? Like again, I don't. I you, you get the idea that he really hates what he does. He really just yeah. really just wants out, you know. Like especially, I think at, at this at this point, he really just uh, he's just had it, you know. He just wants to get, leave, and and you know, I feel like it's uh, really sad, like when you see like how it affects his relationship with his dad. Um, yeah, because his dad's can, sort of a no nonsense guy, isn't he? Yeah, well, his dad is just a you know normal guy. Like he's 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 just you know he, he runs his own business. Um, he wants absolutely nothing to do with anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it's just it's it's kind of sad seeing that kind of like you know <laughs> well basically that um, he's kind of just forced into this, you know. And and we know now, like especially now, how how it's ended with with. Uh, uh, Lalo, like uh, the end of season five. Um, I oh think yeah, Varga's in big trouble. Varga's yeah. in big trouble if Lalo catches up to him, which he probably can. So I mean, I mean, we don't see him in Breaking Bad, so I'm worried about him actually. What's going to happen? <laughs> I mean, hopefully, he doesn't get a horrible death at the hands of um, you know, uh, Lalo. He's obviously probably going to die because we don't we don't see him in Breaking Bad. Yeah, but um, or he run maybe because on the runner runs off. I don't know. Um, it's the closest yeah, like, thing we've got to like Jesse. I think in in this, uh, he's a completely different character. But I think in terms of like what he, the kind of like role he has, I think. Hmm. Um. Oh man, my my high fee is paying me a bit, but I'm just I just got a push. Um. <laughs> There was, um, I think Lalo's quite an interesting guy, to be honest, because he's the sort of oh, bloke who's like yeah, so friendly great. and banterous, but he can just like turn on you in a millisecond. It's so interesting because he's kind of like, he is the opposite of uh, Gus. Yeah. In terms of like, you know, Gus is this very like hard sort of, um, doesn't show like any emotion. Um, and Lalo is just like, he's just like this, like, you know, he jokes around and Everything is everything's a joke. Everything is, you know, he he just uh, always has a laugh, and everything he's far too casual, and that is actually kind of scary. In the same time, so, yeah, because 
Yeah, because like with Gus, you don't know what he's going to do. But with Lala, you don't know what he's going to do because he's acting like he's your friend all the time. Yeah. So yeah, quite like that, that, I think that scene in um, one of the last scenes in uh, season five, season uh, one, of, one of the last episodes in season five. I think it was the it was the penultimate episode. The whole mm-hmm. confrontation when he goes to their um, apartment. That was and, really scary. And he, you know, he keeps saying he keeps going like. Okay, tell, so me, tell me that toy, but again, you know, he just keeps telling him over, you know, he's asking him over and over again to just tell the same story until he hears mm-hmm. what he wants to hear. Um, but he does it in such a calm way, like there's no sign that he's like, you know, getting less patient or anything. It's just, you know, it's just so good. And I love yeah. like Kim's um, kind of like sort of standing up to him and what she says to him. She's like, just, that was amazing. Just scared. Um, I mean, there's so many, there's so many scenes of Kim that are just are brilliant. I think like lots of, um, I guess like monologues and and just like character moments. I think. Mm-hmm. I thought that. Um, I thought you know we get to see Mike do all these jobs like stopping those trucks uh, when he uh, hit Trevor. Well, Stephen Og in the throat. That was quite cool. How he just he's like, I don't need a gun. And then, and then he just deloaded uh, Stephen Ogg's gun and just whacked him in the throat. That was quite oh, hilarious. Yeah. That that is so good. That scene, yeah. Uh, I think it's always it's always good when like people he seemed like people just sort of like uh, completely undermine him and just think that they just sort of don't take him seriously. And then he just like beats the crap out of them. Yeah, they just think, they just think, oh man, this little old man, what the hell is he gonna do? I like I think that that scene. Um, I mean, they come. They they come back to sort of sort of uh, really beat him up. But like the the scene when um, he's out late at night and the, those thugs are kind of like come after him, and he just mm-hmm. like beats the shit out of them. Yeah. And even even at that even at that scene when they're like they all sort of gather gather around him, even then he t- he really kind of like gives them a good fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um. What other characters we talked about? Pretty much quite a few. I guess there's Kim and Howard. Then we can just talk about like what we think of uh, each season. So, um, with <coughs> um, like with um, so with like Howard, he's just he's sort of weird because he's like just he has to be professional twenty four seven. It's sort of like he's playing. He's pretending. You know, there's people who, like, in certain... So like, there was this one teacher at my college who was just, like, sort of... You don't know if they're acting weird or if it's just uh, them being an amazing actor, but basically there was this one teacher who was next-level weird. Like, Well, not weird, but, like, insanely nice. It was really weird. Like, have you ever seen Last Airbender when there was that person from Bossing Say, who, that lady who gives them tours who's always smiling? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it yeah, was well, sort of like that, but not as, not anywhere near as creepy, but sort of in that ballpark. And you think, are these people being serious? Or is this just an act? They have to be. Howard probably isn't acting like this with his wife or whatever. Like, come on. You know. Yeah, he's quite. Um, he is a very weird guy. Um, I feel like the show really loves to dunk on him and just like. Humiliate him whenever they can. <laughs> and so it, there's a lot of like most of the show is just like him being kind of humi- humiliated and told to f off. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's quite funny because obviously he deserves it, doesn't he? He's acting arrogant, yeah. and <laughs> yeah, I think you, I think you kind of like, um, you know, like compared. In all, with all things like considered, like compared to like most most characters in like Breaking Bad or Vocal Soul, um, he's not like a terrible person, but you just love to hate him. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of because he's always, you know, shitting on Jimmy, isn't he? Um, so we might as well move on to Kim. Um, she's sort of that character, who, like you know, Jimmy sort of influences her bad behavior. Well, Jimmy, no matter what, he's you said he, you know, as you said he needs to scheme. Well, with her, it's sort of like she wouldn't be like that if it wasn't for his influence, you know. Yeah, she's 
um she's very like unpredictable character i think yeah um, because like um again you know she does take she does take the law and everything very seriously um but she is definitely like she just she is definitely influenced by jimmy and um you know i think she kind of like um she likes to sort of like i think she kind of feels that high of sort of you know from ske- from scheming as well um yeah and i think there are kind of points as, as well like where she kind of just accepts that jimmy um you know does some really bad bad things and kind of just sort of like mm-hmm. moves on <laughs> she, she yeah. knows like he's gonna if ever he's you know gonna ha- help her help her of anything she knows that she's not gonna like what he does but she's gonna she's just gonna let it happen yeah she has tried to tell him straight before like remember when he did it was it the end of series four when he did that big sort of act when he's like i'm never gonna be as good as my brother yeah and then he's like they were eating it up one asshole was crying and she was like jimmy what the hell and he's like not Jimmy, better call Saul, and then the series. Then that was the end of series four. Yeah, I think there's 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 quite a lot of like scenes where uh, you know she she tries to support him as you know as, as much as she possibly can, but there's there's so many scenes where you can see how like disappointed she is in him. Yeah, um, yeah she she really doesn't like it when he uh, kind of like says stuff about um, like his his brother. Um, yeah. You know, I think like there's like um, isn't there that scene where you know he, she she really hesitates giving him the the letter the letter he left, mm. um, and she's she's expecting him to kind of like have this sort of emotional sort of moment. He's just and he just kind of like he just reads it and it's like, oh uh, well yeah he he knew he know knows how to write a letter and that that really just makes her sort of break down. She just doesn't like that, you know, um. And yeah, I just mm-hmm. think it's just a lot. It's a lot of that, like a lot with like Kim. She's just kind of like, you know, a lot of the time. I mean, sometimes she's like, you know, sort of uh, just go- going along with what whatever he's doing. But sometimes she just there's a lot of moments where she can just tell she's like just generally disappointed in him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. And again, there's lots of scenes where she kind of like dunks on um, Howard. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like the, yeah. I think there's that scene when, you know, she sort of confronts him and says, like, "How dare you, you know, sort of say that, you know, you think, you know, you, you think you may have been responsible for like, um, Chuck's suicide and stuff. How how do you think he was gonna, you know, sort of think of that? And you know, he kind of goes, "Is there anything that I can I can sort of uh, do to kind of like make up for this?" And he says. No, she just walks out. But she just walks off. She just yeah. <laughs> and then there's that. Um, I think the scene when you know he kind of uh, tries to explain. You know, he tries to tell her about. Oh, I don't think Jimmy's well. You know, like he he uh, he threw the um, burning balls and you know my car, and then he he sends hookers to you know and, and, mm-hmm. all that stuff. and she just thinks it's funny. She says, "Oh, is that all, is that all he did?" You know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've looked at every character, every really significant one. Uh, so we might as well go into like the season series one and two, right? There are some cool moments, you know, it, it establishes things, but it's sort of like random things happening. There isn't really much of an overarching story. Yeah, there's not but... like, I don't think there's, you don't really get a sense that it's leading up to Breaking Bad as much. It's, it, yeah. it doesn't feel like it's, yeah, I think you're. I think there's. A, I think I generally was really invested in in it from the start, but I do think it kind of like it took a while for it to be like connected to Breaking Bad. Hmm. But it obviously does that so that we can get to know what Mike and Saul were like and their adventures and all that jazz. When they are in the desert. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, actually, no. I'll get to that later. Sorry. Yeah. That yes, that think... series. Wasn't it season three when they started introducing like Gus and and like more characters mm. from Breaking Bad into it? Because that's yeah. when you kind of started to kind of connect more, I think, with like with that. I think. Yeah, hundred percent. And you see all the classic gangsters too. 
Um, you see the guy from, uh, you see Manny from Scarface, and you see that other guy who cut that dude's head off and stuck it on a horses. Can't remember his name. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, oh man. All right, series one to you know half decent. There was a cool scene with that Leicester type guy when Mike's like, "Good criminal, bad criminal, that's up to you." But um, yeah, you don't know if this is for you. And then he has to sell that big, massive daft car, <laughs> and he's like really upset that they're oh, going to take no, it apart for his bike. He says it's uh. It looks like a car for four-year-old pimps or something. Yeah. That, you know that, what was even, yeah, you know what was even funnier though? The uh the cover up story saw came up with and Kim's like, You're you're falsifying evidence and he had to like sit on a pie and grind on it. That was quite funny. <laughs> the fat Lester guy. Or for some baseball cards. Um oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> But yeah, the stuff with Chuck not hiring him, that was pretty interesting. And you're like, damn, Chuck actually did this. Um, so being at the, um, uh, you know, the Davis and Main, that's quite interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty good. A very character driven, but not really story driven. Um, then series three, it starts getting better. The rivalry starts getting more heated. Uh, quite a Plus shocking end. You have that real kind of like drama with Chuck and Jimmy, don't you? It really escalates. Exactly. The the court trial was amazing. What's it called? Chicanery. That episode. That was amazing, man. Yeah, I think it's called that. Yeah, that, that that's um, that episode's brilliant. Um. Then we move on series four. It's cool how, it, as you said, with the links to Breaking Bad, how it's um it's like them building the meth lab, aren't they? So. You know, the workers, um, Werner and his squad, they're building the lab. And then you see Gail roll up at the end and he's like, oh, this isn't too bad, blah, 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 blah. And obviously Gus is just brewing, like, kill him, yeah, kill him, I don't care. Mike's like, oh, no, I can't believe I have to do this. And that just turns him into more of a machine. Oh, and then, you know, Lalo, uh, Lalo is just, like, you know, trying to kind of, like... Um... <laughs> it's just uh, watching them the entire time and sort of trying to chase up with them and... <laughs> Oh, someone's rolled up. How's it going, Pogger? How's it going, man? You're doing good. We're just uh, on better course all at the moment. Uh, but yeah, Series 4 was really kick-ass. Um, now, on Series 5, right, you know, Lalo having to pay for what he's done, Saw getting him out of it, the desert was amazing, that desert scene was amazing. The ending was crazy. How It's weird how Gus keeps Hector around, but he, like, you know, he wants to do Lalo, and that's quite uh, interesting, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, I love I love season five so much. It was just like yeah. it's basically Breaking Bad at this point, um, <laughs> and um, oh, just like every episode was like so much was so explosive, and it just got like more and more. I mean, like you got pretty much everything in it by this point. I think because you've got you still got all that character and the character driven stuff, but you've got all the kind of like you know the crime side of things as well and um oh god the the ending uh with lalo and and the the whole sequence um that was just so like i i can't i can't believe i'm gonna have to wait all this time now because i was like with with breaking bad and and you know this whole you know sort of break, break or so i've only really watched them the last like sort of 12 months or so mm. So it's all just been there. I've been just been able to just, you know, watch one season to the next. So this is the first time they've actually had to kind of like wait now. And it's it's gonna be quite yeah, I really can't wait for season six. I'm really yeah, sure. mad what's high. gonna happen. It just ends him just walking off, you know. He sees like his whole family are just like a dead and and you just think what, what shit oh shit, like this is just really things are gonna go down, you know. <laughs> Um, I was thinking, right, um, what's going to happen to Saul at the start? That'll be interesting because at the start of every season, we see him working at that coffee shop or that. Yeah. Um, that'll be interesting. Pogger said, oh, 
Do you like any of the Godzilla movies? Not for me, no. I'm not really interested in that type I've of thing. I've never seen a single Godzilla film. I'm, not, I'm just not into monster movies. Yeah. But sorry, what I were you I, saying? Um, yeah, I, I am interested in seeing what they do with that because I wonder if they might actually kind of like end it with one as well because this is the final season. Whether they yeah. kind of want to show the end at the end or... I don't know. It's going to be interesting because the um, once because I, I actually watched the other day. I actually I, I I purposefully went through the first episode of each um, season to oh, watch cool. the just just to watch those bits. And um, once we have like the sixth one, it will literally be the length of an episode. So oh it'll oh be yeah, cool to see. Like I I bet they'll probably. Up, they'll probably release it as an episode. I think that'd be really interesting. They, they should anyway. Um, I actually, <laughs> I actually recorded it and put it on uh, <laughs> from from spoil. I just streamed it and I just yeah recorded it and uh, I kind of got the entire thing so I could watch it. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's cool seeing like the story unfolds because uh, I mean, what you you've got like. It's like, you know, he has a heart, he has like a well, he thinks he's got a heart attack, doesn't he? And then mm-hmm. he goes to the hospital, and the guy, once he's kind of like gone back, you know, he sort of is, he, you know, he's, he's, he's fine, he can sort of, he's just gonna have a rest, whatever. And he takes a taxi, and the you can see like the on the tag thing in this in the car that he's from Al- Albuquerque, mm-hmm. and you know, he's looking at him. And he's got oh, oh shit like he knows he knows who I am and he he you know gets him to like leave um you know no, sort of like away from his house so he doesn't follow him and then you know he goes up to him the, the following day going like um say the line say the line you know <laughs> uh, it was a bit like it was a bit like um in Shrek Forever After you know do the war <laughs> do the war. <laughs> 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 That's what I was thinking of when he said that. And I was like, do the war. Um, and he's like, say it, say it. You know, and and you kind of think now, like, is he like an undercover cop? You know, has he been has he been found or or yeah. you know, what's his deal? I mean, he's gonna come back, it, you know. It would be cool if Saul uh, got arrested because he deserves to pay for what he's done. Yeah, I have no idea where they're gonna go with it. It's gonna be interesting. Or whether they'll kind of like maybe they could they could probably do like a an El Camino kind of like you know, sort of thing with with him like a thing to sort of wrap wrap his story up. I don't know. Hmm. Um. So yeah, I was gonna say the next point is uh, are you on series? So we pretty much talked about everything, ain't we? I sort of want to move on to El Camino, but do you want to mention anything else? I mean, I guess there's kind of like predictions, I guess. What do you think? Oh, yeah, happen? that's it. Yeah, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of characters that I'm worried about because I'm just sort of thinking, well, they're not in Breaking Bad, so something's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen to Kim. I think I think Howard quits the law. I think uh, Kim leaves Jimmy, and even if he does get arrested... If he doesn't get arrested, maybe she shows up at the end or something, finds where he lives. But um, that'd be a bit. Eh. I don't know. I, I feel like I don't. Th- I think Kim's gonna survive. I mean, I hope so. I, hope so. I feel like. I feel like something. Something terrible. Like, like something. Jimmy's gonna do something so, um, kind of like unspeakably stupid or bad, that's gonna make her go. This is the end of the line, end of the road. Yeah, and I don't know what that could possibly be because you know he's already done so much shit. So something's going to happen. Although she's kind of like also kind of going on about schemes and stuff. She's she's wanting to try and do stuff. What mm-hmm. if he kind of starts sort of thinking I'm a bad influence on you and this is not who you are and it kind of like maybe he that'd be really interesting. Says, yeah, I mean that could be. And also that might, might make him a bit more sympathetic as a character, you know. Um, yeah. I feel like that might be what happens. Like maybe he feels like I, I'm, I'm okay 
going down this road, but I, I'm not mm-hmm. encouraging you doing going down the road. Because I mean, even even like at the end of um, season five, even he's kind of like starting to question what she's sort of like, you know, wanting to do. Definitely. Um, yeah, I think that Ignacio. He dies definitely. He's he's gonna bite yeah. the bullet. And I think so I think it's gonna. I mean, it's gonna be quite an explosive ending. Ending with him and uh, Lalo. I think they may possibly both die. I wouldn't be mm-hmm. surprised if like there was some kind of like shootout or so- something of that kind of line where they end up both get both getting killed. Yeah. A bit like Thor and Oak and Shield versus that big uh, what's his name Azog from uh, you know in the Battle of Five Armies. How they both die. Hmm. It'd be cool if it was something like that. Obviously in the desert, not on a, not in the snow. I mean, again, I mean that would kind of like it would go as well with you know the death of um, Gus and um, Hector mm-hmm. as well, then because you know yeah. they kind of just like go down together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess this show, right? Some people do like it even better because it's a. Um, you know a drama and it's very character driven and i think it's standalone it's it's a good standalone show in its own right but objectively i i don't subjectively well subjectively they're on par but love them both i can't pick one i genuinely can't if i had to pick oh it's difficult as anything man it's Mm -hmm. so so difficult Breaking. Uh, let's see how series six goes at the moment. Breaking Bad. Let's see how series six goes. Yeah, I really, I really, really hope, and I, I have a lot of faith it's going to be great. I just think Vince Gilligan um, just knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, anyway. <laughs> um, apparently, you know, they was going to end it after three series, but uh, the fan base was so loyal they kept it going. And I'm thinking, damn, I'm glad four and five did so well, like viewing wise. Um, oh yeah, I mean, if it if it ended then, like there'd be so much that needs to be. It'd be of... odd, wouldn't it? It'd be yeah. so weird. Cause someone, because I was at college at the time, someone said, "Yeah, they're going to um, they're planning on ending Better Call Saul, but because no, they were going to end it, but the fan base and all they kept it going. I'm thinking they were actually going to end this genius show. Like, what about quality? Like, come on, Netflix, you've got loads of money. Like, if it's a quality show, keep it going. Unless the ratings are really bad and you're losing money by doing it. Like losing loads of money, like keep it going, or at least at least say to him, "All right, the ratings are so bad, we'll give you one more season to end it." Then, which probably would have resulted in them rushing it and it not being the best, but still, you know, better than no ending. Mm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'd give this probably like a nine point eight out of ten. I'd definitely put it in the top ten or top five best shows of all time. I mean, it's so hard to make a universe where two of them are like the best shows ever. <laughs> I just don't understand how it's as good as it is like because i i really didn't think a spin-off like it has no right to be as good as it is i i don't mm-hmm. think um, it's, it's it's um i definitely didn't think it would be you know on par with breaking bad but i think it is i think i think i i i'd say they're they're so incredibly close and i think they're both like 10 out of 10 for me um but that's fair that's wait, fair I, i'd say what? i'd say both were sold slightly a above just because all they do with characters and stuff is just so good yeah each their own isn't it? um what was it like talking to callum um yeah it was amazing that was the dream podcast even though he wasn't on my podcast i don't care that it was jerseys uh i can go into more detail about how glad i wasn't everything but like yeah um ask that on the kept watching callum's corner streams obviously this is a breaking bad review but yeah to put it shortly, uh, amazing, absolutely brilliant. Love talking to him. Yeah, if I talked to Logan Paul or True Geordie, I would have been like, all right, how's it going? Yep, cool. But Callum, I was like, man, this is like the coolest thing ever. He's such a realistic. I'm not saying the other, those guys aren't in re- reality, but he seems like one of the most applicable, realistic YouTubers when you talk to him. But yeah, that, that's it in short. But if you ask on the difference on the, on the watching Callum's Corner video, I'll go into more detail. Uh, but yeah, that's fair, William. If you think that that is a bit better, that's totally fair. There's uh, good reasons to uh, think that it's a lot more character based, and in some aspects, it is an easier watch because it's like more chilled out. But I feel like I don't know. Um, as yeah, I say, actually, so... sorry. Um, again, I was just wondering, but that's because there's, no, so, much, there's so much to talk about this. But like, uh, yeah, I think that um, that's one of the one of the things I really like about it as well is. 
it, it, it is kind of is it is pretty chill as well yeah. um like i mean as, as much as i was talking about in the past like how you know it, there's a lot of like really awkward scenes a lot of like you know sort of uh well you know awkward for the characters and, and that mm. kind of stuff um it is also just a really chill uh show as well which um i kind of just really like that as, aspect of it as well yeah um let's just move on to el camino because yeah. uh yeah the high fever man have you have you been having any high fever or you've been totally fine or no i've been i've been totally fine i mean um happy for I, you I bro of, yeah, i mean the heat the heat gets to me a bit but yeah I, yeah I probably, uh, I probably i think i probably go off like 15 minutes or so probably so we can get through this in 15 minutes um that we aren't going to go into about a billion different details about different characters with this one because there's literally there's no need. Uh, the film happens straight after Breaking Bad. I like how it's it's done in a way that it it's still 2009. They're on a 360 and messing around, and the phones are older, and it wasn't all social media orientated. The cars are all older cars for the most part, from what I remember. Uh, it's cool to see Jesse getting away straight away and seeing that. Because pretty much it's left to the imagination what happens after Breaking Bad, after Breaking Bad ending. But now we see he's under a shit ton of stress trying to get away from the police, which is some, which is pretty expected. He goes to Skinny Peas and Badgers, and straight away you can see the PTSD of being kidnapped by those crazy bikers, uh, biker gang, whatever. Um, well, they're not actually a biker gang, aren't they? Just like, um, aren't they just like white supremacists? But they seem like a biker, biker gang. Or Nazis or whatever, I don't know what they are. They're just lunatics, pretty much. But um, let's just say like a gang or whatever. So uh, let's say, um, oh, what's his name? I can't believe I forgot that Jack's gang. And so you see all the trauma that has been put through him, uh, Jesse. You see other things he went through, like having to see Todd's maid dead, which is really strange. Todd is just a... Todd is such a casually evil guy. Like he, he sort of is evil, but he... It's sort of like, as he says, never personal. Like, nothing's ever personal. He just sort of does it because he feels he has to. Uh, do you watch the Buddhism hotline? No. Do you, Leah, uh, Liam? I don't know why I said Liam. Do you, William, do you watch the uh, Buddhism hotline? No, I, I, this is the first I've heard of it. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, with this film, Oh, yeah, I love the um, goodbye between Badger and Skinny P and Jesse. Well, between Skinny P and Badger and Jesse, how Badger's like, all right, I'll see you then. Good bloke. Laters. And then Skinny P's like, yo, you're my idol, man. And then just walks off. And I'm like, they've been friends since childhood. And like, what a unsentimental goodbye. It's sort of heartbreaking, really. But like, they're, I think as they're all hard on criminals, they're not going to be hugging each other or saying, oh, I'm going to miss you, bro. What a legend. Um, they or shake their hand. They're just sort of going to be like, "Yep, see ya." It was crazy that Jesse was like, "Why are you even doing this for me?" What? <laughs> He's like your best friend, but I guess because like hmm. he, he probably wouldn't expect this from Skinny P. He probably would have thought they would have like not really been that bothered about him, wouldn't, wouldn't they? Wouldn't he? Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I really like those two. Um, like, I, I feel like they're just kind of like this. Throughout, I mean, throughout Breaking Bad and like you know, Nessa, they're just they're just kind of like just stoners, you know, just normal, yeah. normal stoners. Just just guys. Kind of get involved, get involved with it, but like, um, <laughs> they kind of just um, they don't really change throughout the series. They're just kind of just just you know, normal guys, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So. Throughout the story, obviously, it's just all about Jesse trying to uh, start a new life like Walt did. He had the chance, but he threw it away because of the rice and stuff and him finding out about Brock getting poisoned by Walt. Um, I mean, it's nice to see the flashbacks as well. Um, it's nice to see how, well, we know that Walter dies now, don't we? There was some speculation that he survived somehow because the police officer checked through his pulse. But obviously, uh, he's dead. Um, I mean, there wouldn't be anything else for him to do with that, like you know, like his, exactly his, would have been his, his goals. He got everything that he wanted, so like. And, and what story was over anyway? That was pretty much the end. Well, Jesse's story, even though in my opinion it's that it was over. There was you, you could do a bit more with it, um, which they did do. 
Uh, the stuff with those pretend police officers, that was cool. The standoff at the end was cool. The call with his parents was cool. Uh, overall, the way I see it, though, I do try and judge it as its own film. And if it wasn't Breaking Bad, it wouldn't really be the best film. But it's Breaking Bad. It's, it's all right. The flashback scenes are cool. It don't really. It wasn't really needed, but it was nice, if that makes sense. Mm. Actually, yeah, I yeah, couldn't I live without wonder, it. I do huh? wonder, actually, like, would it work? Would would it work if you had no prior knowledge of Breaking Bad? Like, uh, I guess it probably wouldn't. Would it would probably be. I'd say, as you have, if you have prior knowledge of Breaking Bad, it's a great film. Uh, if you don't have prior knowledge of Breaking Bad, it's average or above average, depending on I what guess, you like. I guess, in a way, it'd be kind of a bit like watching the Avengers without like seeing any of the films before. Yeah, because like, I watched it because you know, I, I watched the Avengers in 2012 and I only saw Iron Man and I thought, like, why should I care about Thor and Captain America? I was like, no, <laughs> God, I don't care. But obviously. Now, I watched the whole thing through and I was like, oh, yeah, Avengers is actually good once you know everything about what's going on. But, yeah, you're right. It's like, but the thing is, as it's a film, it's it's film based off TV series. It's not like a film series like the MCU is. You sort of you have to judge it a little bit as a film and as a film because the film's so reliant on flashbacks. The flashbacks don't really have any meaning because you, if you don't know about Breaking Bad, you don't care for the flashback. So the only real thing is the main story. And you don't know about any of the relationships between most of this character, most of the characters, and you don't know why you... Re- it sort of explains why you want Jesse Pinkman to get out of it, because you do see flashbacks where he goes through some trauma, um, you know, being kidnapped. But at the same time, I'd say it's above average, but if you don't know about Breaking Bad, that, that's my opinion. Yeah, I'd say that with, um, with it being a film... It's quite different to like, um, yeah. you know, like the series because yeah, I... I think that, you know, if it was like, if this was like part of a series, um, you know, the flashbacks, well, we probably wouldn't have the flashbacks. We'd probably have just no. seen it like going in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, the his journey afterwards would just probably just be like an episode, you know. So there, there is yeah. that, I think. Um I think it just sort of shows that I think Breaking Bad and Vocal Soul, the way that they're set up, the way they're they're structured as shows, they 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 only really work in that format. And I think because mm-hmm. it's, it's so cool. character driven, and you have to spend so much time yeah. with the characters. So there's a lot that kind of when it comes to a film, again because it is very character driven, it's having to kind of like you know tell you explain a lot of stuff. In a way that a sh- the show would do d- better, I think. Mm-hmm, definitely. But I mean, with that being said, though, like, um, you you know the dude. Kind of... Yeah, sorry. I, I was just gonna say, you know that dude who's like, uh, I want the exact amount of money if you want to start a new life, and then Jesse has to go on that massive charade, and you know the bit where you think he gets arrested, but it's those two fake cops. That was cool. Overall, there wasn't anything like next level outstanding, but it was pretty cool. You really you wanted Je- things to work out for Jesse, and I think it's cool. The standoff was cool as well at the end, and I was like, "I'll kill you all if you don't." Um, you know, I've got your IDs, but obviously it's just a bluff from Jesse. But they don't know that because he just killed two dudes who were like, obviously really bad guys. Um, what other? And it was cool. I was like, "I'm no cop killer," ah, but then obviously they're not cops. Um, the old man who kept interrupting them was quite funny. Nearly foiled their scheme. And uh, at, at the very end, right, we might as well skip to the ending because we pretty much talked about a lot of the stuff. But I feel like the ending, it's more happy than sad. And it's pretty cool that he writes a card to Brock. But it's m- sort of bittersweet in a sense because Jesse sort of needs people around him and now he's on his own again. So it's sort of... But as he learned so much from everything that's happened that he'll be fine on his own. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... It is really unknown, like what he'll make of his life. Like, I guess that's kind of like, like mm. the big kind of unknown. I suppose. I mean, I like to yeah. think that um, he would end up, um, you know, kind of becoming a, um, you know, a decent guy that would kind of just sort of like. Yeah, but he could get caught easily. You know what I mean? Like, even if he lives the best life ever after this, the police could be like, "We know what you look like." We found you, so he has to keep a low That's profile. The thing. It's like there's never, there's never gonna be like, they're never gonna be fully. I mean, like you can see with like Soul, you know, like um, he's edgy. 
Yeah, the whole time, his whole, his whole, ta- his whole life, he's looking at everybody, thinking, you know, like, I think that's what I love that. Always in, looking over his shoulder. In the uh, yeah, in the episode, in the first episode, um, he's looking at that guy. He, he really thinks he's looking at him, and it's just someone, you know, over his shoulder. Yeah. Um, we might as well just say the reins now because I just want to. Oh, the high fever, man. Yeah. And obviously, you We're have to go, go in a few minutes. Over two hours as well. So it's been a long. Yeah. This has been a fucking sick one, though, man. Before I give my rating, I just want to say I don't even care that they were. Well, I'm not really too bothered about viewers. Like, it is what it is. It's nice to oh, get yeah, views. No. But... I'm just looking forward to just talking about it because yeah. I never get a chance to kind of like talk about this kind of stuff much. Because I think when it comes to like shows, it's like. I never, I'm never really that ever that invested in shows. I could, well, the thing is, as well, like these, I really was. Mm-hmm. And also, the thing is with your podcast as well. It's like you, it's all about brick films. So you are talking about stories and stuff, but you're not like you're not just going to suddenly bring up, oh yeah, Breaking Bad, blah 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 blah. And they might know of it, but you're not going to talk about Breaking Bad for or a TV show for an extensive period of time. You're going to talk about the brick film you have on. So I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure doing something like this is like pretty refreshing. So. Totally, yeah. Um, just quickly for Pogger, do a reaction to the best trial donations. It's class. Nope, I'm not doing that. I don't want to get my channel banned. Thank you. I don't. Well, mine and Aaron's channel banned. I don't want to get it banned. You know, I'm, and I'm not reacting to that crap anyway. It's it's staffed. It's nice to get. It gives Callum money, but apart from that, it's just it's basically well, the troll donos are exactly what they are. So they give Callum three dollars, and then they spam something really. Uh, they don't mean it in a nasty way, but they spam like you know nasty words and horrible yeah. stuff really, really loudly. Uh, or they might, but things that aren't they do do trolls anyway, which aren't too bad. Like they might have someone going ballistic in the camera, going Whoa, like that, and just confusing Callum. But um, yeah, that, that's just the cheeky troll donations. I'm not reacting to that though. And uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh yeah, ratings. Uh, probably uh, seven point. 7.3 for me out of 10. Yeah, I've got the same. I'd say like 7. So um, pretty good. Yeah. So we can pretty much end that there then. Um, yeah, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. Uh, they're like two of the best shows ever. Obviously, El Camino isn't like the best film ever. But, you know, it's uh, it's it's different in it, you know. It's hard to pull off like the best film ever when you know it's you've got like you're better at writing TV shows and you're trying to make a film off a TV show, it's just difficult in it. Um, you got any closing messages then? Um, well, I guess, I guess if you, I mean, I say go watch them, but I mean, like, if, if you've got this far, you hopefully I have it already. Um, no. <laughs> otherwise, you've you've heard the entire thing. Spoiled the um, whole show. But uh, but no, yeah. I mean, this has been really this has been really great. I've um, I've been I was looking forward to this actually. So um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, yeah sound man. Well, anyway, everyone, um, cheers for watching, and yep, yeah, have a good one. See you later. Check out uh, William's channel, LOTW Studios, right there. Um, yeah, but anyway, like is everyone have a good one. Bye, guys.